It's time for Twig this week, and Google Stacy Higginbotham's here. Jeff Jarvis is here. I'm here. We're going to talk about the Internet of Things. Stacy and I have this oven that's connected to the Internet. We'll talk about that. A new device that allows you to use Amazon's Echo in your car. Actually, it's not a new device, just a new capability. And, of course, all the tech news, including Vizio's consent decree with the FTC. It's all coming up next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and once again, time for Twit's audience survey. We'd really like to hear from you. It's only going to take a couple of minutes, really. That's all. Just go to twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. Your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. And thanks for your continued support. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 391, recorded Wednesday, February 8th. 2017 probe placement problem this week in google is brought to you by 23andme a personalized genetic service based on your 23 pairs of chromosomes in your dna for valentine's day this year give that special person the gift of knowledge go to 23andme.com and get 20 dollars off when you buy before valentine's day and by rocket mortgage from quicken loans when it comes to the big decision of choosing a mortgage lender with one that has your best interest in mind. Use Rocket Mortgage for a transparent, trustworthy home loan process that's completely online at quickenloans.com slash twig. And by LegalZoom. Take control of your family's future and get the legal help you need. Visit LegalZoom.com and enter Twig at checkout for some special savings. It's time for Twig this week in Google, the show where we talk about Google and our ovens. And that's because the Internet of Things, the queen of the Internet of Things is here, Stacy Higginbotham of Stacy on IoT and IOTpodcast.com. And she are, and I are going to talk about our connected ovens. We're not kidding. <laughs> We're not kidding. My oven's on the Internet. I learned some things about the June oven, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, also here, Jeff Jarvis. He's the king of all media. Well, at least he's a friend of the king of no, all I media. Wouldn't, I would, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't claim that title best, ever. Best buddies trouble. to the king of all media. Well, <laughs> blogger at buzzmachine.com. Long-time caller. Long-time caller. Uh, he's also a professor of journalism at the City University of New York at the Tau, Tau Knight School of Journalism. And we join together every week, not just to talk about Google, despite the name. That's just a convenient hook on which to hang the hat of all things, you know, having to do with Internet, social media, journalism, the new world, the new world. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> what what's the matter, Jeff? We you don't <laughs> like the new the world old, too much. I want the old world back. <laughs> hey, the only thing constant is change, Jeff. Come on, it'll it'll just. I was fine with I was fine with that till the change went went on a detour. For man. the first time, I was liking the change in my life. I now understand the phrase. I'm just glad I won't live long enough to see that. I never understood that. And now I get it. Oh, but I've lived long enough to see it. Because <laughs> we <wrong>. did. <laughs> yeah. Hey. 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 So um, hey. I, why don't we start with the June oven? Because there's a little heat going on here. Uh, we <laughs> oh, I know. We should mention <laughs> that um, June uh, is a sponsor of one of Stacy's shows, just as a disclaimer. Yes. But you talked, to, you talked me into buying this long before they were a sponsor. Yes. And it, I bought my own, too. Yeah. So and, I, I paid actual money. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, the, by the way, the other side of this, a lot of actual money. It's a $1,500 toaster oven. Okay, before you get upset, that's a ridiculous amount of money. And I wasn't going to do it. I actually put down the $100 deposit. And they wrote me about a month ago saying, okay, your oven's ready. I said, I'm not. But then I realized I'm already in for $100. And you get, a, you know, you can return it after whatever, a month or something. So I thought, well, I'll give it a try. But I said, but Stacy, I saved the box. Oh, good. No, I still have the box, too. Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't normally save the box, but this time I saved all the packing material. Uh, and I was glad. So the first thing I cooked in it was a steak. Now, I got to tell you, this oven is wild. If you look at the front of it, it looks like it has an, an Android phone in the front of it. And it pairs to your iPhone. And you watch while your food cooks. But not just watch, like, what temperature it is. You can watch 
what how hot it is inside the food, how hot it is inside the oven. You can watch video, live video of your food being cooked. And I had the weirdest experience yesterday. I put a piece of bread in there to make toast because I want to see, well, does it toast? <laughs> and it recognized... I don't know Wait a minute. No, I recognized it. It said that's either bread or a strudel. <laughs> Yes, and I can explain why. <laughs> How would you? So then I tapped the bread and said, light, medium, dark, dark, you know, and I set the, the thing. It's got ceramic elements, so they, they get bright red immediately. And it toasted it about the same time as my Breville toaster oven, which is what I compare it with. About five minutes, but it tells you it's going to be five minutes. tells you exactly how long. The toast, I've never had such even toast, by the way, perfectly browned on both sides. <laughs> So literally, my husband and I have been talking about this. I'm like, did, did you notice anything about the toast in the oven? He's like, it's toast to your toast. And I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it felt silly. Like we were justifying the cost of the oven. There's or no justification. I'm going to say this right up front. There is zero justification oh. for the cost. It's way too expensive. I'm embarrassed that I bought something that expensive. How much does, does your other oven, your Revan oven cost? Revel is a couple hundred bucks. And it's a, but the yeah. Revel is a fantastic convection it does it does every actually it does everything the june does is a smaller one of the things that's surprising is how big the june is it's taller uh you need a lot of you should get the measurements before you buy it to make sure you can fit it under your counter because it needs a few inches all round because it's an oven it also feels like it looks like it's made out of space age materials like not like the inside is some sort of weird plastic um right? it's it's fancy it's got oh, carbon that's, that's fiber heating elements yes this is it Oh, it was the back that it was showing. Sorry, yeah. I was confused for a moment there. And it, so, so, uh, so I cooked a steak and it didn't come out great. But I'm used to cooking my steak on my big green egg, and it's smoky and delicious, and it's got a, it's, yeah. it's better. Okay, yeah, it's not going to taste smoky. Don't recommend did, it did, for the steak. We did uh, fillets. It'd be for okay for guests. that. It was good for that. You um, have a thermometer, was, so you could put it right in the meat. And, it, and it'll tell you if it needs if if you if it recognizes the food, it'll actually tell you to put the thermometer in. Yeah, which is nice. And in many cases, so, it does recognize the food. Sometimes, though, you have to pick the food from a. So when you when you when you get next to the oven, the display lights up. It almost says hello. It's a, it's the size of a small uh, Android device, and I'll say why I keep saying Android in a second. Uh, and then it and then it has a scale in the feet. You mentioned this, which is kind of cool. So it knows whatever. You know how much steak you put in, and uh, and with, if it can identify it through the camera, it will actually say, "Oh, I see a toast, or I see, or a piece of bread, or I see a strudel." Why is it the same strudel and bread? So it's what it is is it actually when you put salmon in, it also says salmon or strudel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it did not. I must have the update because it did. That's the other thing. It updates all the time, right? Yes, it's connected it, to your Wi-Fi. Should. It's doing a probability. It's it's machine learning, so it's it's doing a probability that this is most likely. It knew I put in salmon. It's this. It knew right. it was salmon. Ah, it was so it also learned it didn't going give you back, Stacy. No, it didn't give me a choice. It, it learned. Okay, it's getting better. Okay. Yeah. So, Stacy, does the data go back up to the cloud? That a thousand people said, "No, that's not strudel. Yes. Damn it, it's salmon." Yes. And uh -huh. it, they're planning an update. I don't think it's up there yet. I haven't been given this option. Maybe it's on the phone. Um, to ask, how did you like that cooked? So they can learn about like how things, like is their preset recipe the right one or yeah, not? Yeah, because the steak, for instance, was underdone. I had to put it back in. I said medium rare, it came out rare. Uh, could be because of poor probe placement, which probe has always been a problem of mine. Um, so you got to get that temperature probe, you know, where the <laughs> coldest part of the steak would be. Maybe I, maybe I missed and I pushed it too far and I thought it was more cooked than it was. This is sounding uncomfortable, but yeah. go ahead. <laughs> okay, so the next day I'm going to cook salmon because I want, before the show, I wanted to cook, you know, steaks, salmon, chicken breasts, and toast before the show so I could talk to you, Stacey. <laughs> Excellent. I, 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 I was, I've been wondering about it all I didn't week. bake I cookies. Baked. I didn't bake cookies yet because I am not going to bake cookies, but maybe maybe we will for the kid. So um, I'm ready. I got the salmon, open it up, like walk up to the oven. It's in a boot loop. That has never happened to Not me. Not a good okay. thing for your toaster oven to be in a boot loop. So the June Ooh. logo comes up, and then briefly it flashes the screen, then it crashes. So I go, oh, crap. Well, and Lisa says, you better turn on the oven, the regular oven, because <laughs> we want to have dinner someday. And our oven is crashed. 
<laughs> so, but they have, so I go onto the June site and they have, uh, they don't have a phone number, uh, but they have a chat interface and it does say, yeah, we're not here all the time. So, you know, but, okay. but fortunately, uh, uh, what was her name? Trisha or somebody? Trisha, June? Not June. should have been June. But, uh, but it's, Trisha says, oh yes. Hi. Oh, good. And I said, my oven's in a boot loop. <laughs> she said, describe that. And I described it. She said, all right, we're going to reset the oven. This is a good thing for you to know, Stacy. You unplug the oven, which I had done already. Plug mm -hmm. it in, holding, pushing in the button. You have this big knob on the front. Push it in, mm -hmm. then plug it in and hold it. And you know what comes up? The Android bootloader. Android. It's oh. Android. It's the Android. <gasps> yeah. Which is ironic because they only have iOS software. <laughs> no, they have an Android. They have an have Android they done it? Okay, they didn't have it. Oh, wait. Time. Oh, I could be lying No, they're to you. doing, they're working on it. They don't have it yet. Okay, you're right. You're right. So uh, it's Android. And, it, and then you have the same things you have in an Android recovery screen where you can delete the cache, delete the data, <laughs> reset, just like Android. So I, and she says, just do a complete reset. So I did a complete reset. And just like Android, it get, you have to do down, 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 and then do it for to confirm it. It refreshed it. It did not need to do the update. So it didn't. And I told her that. And she said, oh, that's interesting. Huh. <laughs> huh. Uh, someone in the chat room asked if it's running an Intel Atom. I, it's actually the NVIDIA K1, oh, I believe. Oh, that's why it's Android. Sure, that makes sense. It's that's what's NVIDIA in my Tegra K1 processor. Yeah, that's what's yeah. in my shield. Uh, that's actually a very good processor. It looks like an older version of Android. It does not look like Nougat. Uh, it looks like more like KitKat. It looks like a fairly old, but it doesn't matter. That's not a big deal. It doesn't matter. It's, it's custom. It's more stable. Yeah, we'll it's, not, it's not running Android, really. It's just, you know, it's running on the application. When, you're, when, you're, when your oven rings, answer it. Yeah. So then the next thing is it says join the Wi-Fi. So I got on the Wi-Fi, connected to the phone. I've had a little trouble connecting with the phone, but it, but the beauty part is then, then it's fine. I put the salmon steaks in. It says, oh, salmon. How would you like that cooked? Firm or loose or whatever? <laughs> Two choices. <laughs> moist or firm, something like that. Drier. I think it's like flaky or moist. Yeah, or it's it's <laughs> one of them's unpalatable, but that's the one I chose because I didn't want firm. So, you know, you went dry or moist. So I chose yeah. moist, and it was again a little undercooked. We put it back in for a few minutes. This, I mean, you can use it as a regular oven. You set the temperature and everything like that. Um, Chicken, same thing with a little undercooked. So it's a little bit, a little bit undercooked. Actually, the salmon Ooh, was that's fine. That's dangerous. Though. I okay. So here's where I think everything is perfectly cooked. So I have a probe placement problem. I'm thinking. Well, no, I'm wondering if maybe you just like your food more done. Well, I don't eat chicken where it's pink. I don't eat steak where it's cold in the middle. I mean. Oh well, no, that's that's true. It was true. not doing okay. it the way it's supposed to do it. Okay, because I've cooked like I mean I cooked. Let's see. I've cooked five fillets in there, and they they came out. We did them for rare. No, we did the medium rare. Yeah, and that what? was for me. And then we kept my husband's in longer. Ugh. Um, and they were pink. They were still pink in the middle. I want it to be pink but for the, medium. Yeah, but um, you know, medium rare. But I don't want it to be cold in the middle, which it was. It was. Yeah, it was no, rare. It was blood rare. It was blue. So jam um, that sucker in there. Yeah, I think it could be poor probe placement because we anyway. I'll play with this, but I'm very impressed. Uh, the chicken browned beautifully because what it does is it all, it will bake it and then it'll turn on the broiler. It does this all automatically. Yeah, um, it crisps, it like does something to crisp the skin at a yeah. higher temperature and then ch chinks it down. And you can watch and... the whole thing. In fact, you can even, I can show you on my phone because I have the app. I can, show you, I can show you videos of my bread toasting because it has a picture. <laughs> it's just wild. I can show you, you know, and then, and you can see it talk took, uh, 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 started at 4.30 p.m., ended at 4.41 p.m. It shows you the temperature chart. It's the geek. It really is the geek's, you know, thing. Here's the here's the chicken breast uh, cooking. And you, so you have a video, and it, it cooked quite well. <laughs> it's really weird. I have to clean the camera, obviously. Um, anyway, despite the cost is the negative, if it were half as much, I would tell everybody, this is just forget any other toaster oven. This is the one you want. Um, yes. Uh, uh, Stacey, you, you scolded say, him last time and said it's not a toaster oven. It's an oven. I, so well, it makes I toast. As, it does make toast. So I would look at it as a, if you don't have two ovens. So I have I have two ovens in my house and they're two full-sized ovens and they were $1,500 each. That's they're true. Lovely. You're right. Okay. Um, so if I only had one of those, oh. I would buy this in a heartbeat. Instead of the second really oven. Instead of the second oven. I agree. 
And it's big. It's bigger than my Breville toaster oven. I could put a small whole chicken in there. Um, yeah, I mean, I've I did a I've done up to a six pound chicken in there, which yeah. is good for feeding my family. Right. And, and, for, and it's good for that because it it knows how much it weighs. It know it knows what the temperature, internal temperature is. It can look at it. I mean, it really is is. I, I agree with you. This is a fascinating use of this IoT technology. I think it's like, you know how we talk about our smart homes being like anticipating our needs and all that? This oven doesn't anticipate your needs, but it provides that level of set it and forget it. Like, I don't have to think about it. I literally shove a tray of food in there. Yeah. And it, it's like, oh, I got this. And then I'm like, sweet. Yeah. I would like to try some baking. I think it'd be interesting to do some baking in there. I will say that during the review, and I don't, I don't bake a lot, so we baked some loaf of like banana bread or something. Uh -huh. The top got done, and the middle still right. wasn't done. But it was also it wasn't a preset, so oh, I'm trying to remember. So you were just doing a recipe. Yeah, I was just doing a okay. recipe, and again, I don't bake. Can't so. really blame it if because it's the I want I want the presets to work perfectly. Yes, and and they should. And I think that's what's interesting is that they 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 will, right? Or they, at yeah. least they're getting feedback. Yeah, they, I mean, they switched their cookie recipe. I think I told you guys yeah, this. Yeah. So, I'm going to try some other some vegetables. You know, uh, I like to I would love to bake root vegetables like cauliflower, and mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to try some of those uh, things. Um, but I have to say, you know, it's kind of amazing. Actually, it's kind of interesting. I just it is awfully expensive, and I guess we're kind of subsidizing the initial uh, outlay. Yes. By the way, and, uh, the service, uh, the support was very good. And she said, we're going to have the uh, engineers contact you because I'd like to get more information on, uh, on what happened with the, with the crash and the pairing. So that was good. She was pretty knowledgeable. She said, well, I try rebooting your router. It was good. She, she knew what she was talking about. So there you go. I wonder. I wonder but, if they do I, their own support. No, sorry, go ahead. I felt like that was actually somebody who was hanging around the office late at night. <laughs> <laughs> They're in San Francisco, so it wasn't that late. About seven p.m. <laughs> go ahead, Jeff. No, I, I want to talk about a different gadget. It's yes. Not on the, not on the, do it. On. Should I? Yes. This will yes. be the gadget segment. I'm having fun. I don't mind. Beats talking so about this Trump. What's that? Is the Cardia. Okay. You remember, uh, was it two weeks ago now? You I was had uh, AFib. I had AFib. Yep. So I was, uh, this got recommended to me, and this happens to be the company that Vic Condotra is now the CEO of. Oh, I saw your exchange oh. with Vic. Yeah. Yeah. And so it is very, very cool because all you have to do is put your fingers on these metal pads and it talks to your phone and you get a good AKG. In fact, I <gasps> will uh, email one to mine to Karsten right now. That's uh, kind of amazing, and you send you need this really. You crazy. need the, your doctor to be in on this, right? Because you want to send the. I presume you want to send the the graph. Well, no. So here's the way it works. So, Carson, I'm sending you my live, EKG right now. This is a live core. Is the company that does this a live core? Yeah, yeah, a live core. And and uh, the first time you sign up, yes, they have to have a clinician. It takes up to 24 hours. A clinician does look at your EKG. Oh, it doesn't have to I be guess your to make doctor. Sure. Okay. No, it has, hey, but I guess to make sure you're not dying. Yeah. Uh, and then you can look at your own after that, and you can send it to your doctor if your doctor actually gives you an email address, but that's rare. Uh, you can sign up with your doctor. You can pay to get um, analysis. Oh, uh, I, so if you're worried, you could say, hey, and you send it to them, and they say, well, that's say my, that's my ticker oh, right Jesus, there. you better get to the hospital right now. I know. <laughs> Yes, you no, that looks nice and that. regular. That's good. Yeah, no, you were boring me with the oven talk. See how calm it is? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Excellent. <laughs> so that is normal sinus rhythm, and it will analyze it and say you're normal. That um, is super cool. It really, really, really is, and it's so small. And you can get, there's a there's a thing you can get, so you can stick it on the back of your phone, so you can check that way. But I don't want to become completely neurotic. My wife got nervous I would get completely neurotic, because I used to be always like this with my hand on my neck, checking my pulse. Um, so, but that's not, you know, fully informational. And then when I went into AFib, I went, I looked for apps on, on Android and there are apps that use the camera and the light. You put your finger yeah. on the camera, yeah. but mm -hmm. it's a, a very unreliable, A, and B, really hot. <laughs> it burns your finger. Um, and, and, and not nearly as good. Whereas this, 
really does give you a decent a EKG. This is and only be, 80 bucks. I can't believe it. It's really quite amazing. It's so tiny. You can you can put it on the back of your phone. They're coming out with a watch that that'll have it on the watch. So you can put your finger on the on the watch. Hmm. Um uh I would have thought the watch just It's actually you know, a band. No, no, no. It's cuz it works on an Apple Watch. So it's they a, used yeah, to it's, have the, it's a, a case a, that did this, an iPhone case that did this. Okay. Oh, really? A live cord. Yeah. Um they also have I don't know if this is still here. Let's see. Um there's a database. So you could actually send in your data to this database. And I'm trying to see if it's still there at the USC Center for Body Computing. They're, they were creating like a, they were trying to get enough data so they could do like, understand what's a normal heartbeat. What does it look like? Because one of the challenges of having all this is now that we can see everything, we don't know what's normal or not. Well, and also uh, that's kind of what, that's the, what one of the things Apple's pushing is Apple using iPhones for research. So you yes. Sign up for a bunch of these research projects. Research kit. Because the nervous, yeah, research kit. The nervousness of this is, and this is why Vic's company, AliveCore, is so unusual. They got FDA approval. Yes. A lot of companies really are kind of, it, that's difficult. It's expensive and difficult. So uh, I'm trying but, but to you, see. You, you oh, can yeah, imagine all kinds of things where, 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 where the signals will be good. And what I, what I, what I, I'm going to, I'm talking to Vic in a week or so and I'll report on that, but. I, I, uh, maybe we should have Vic on, in fact. Yes. Um, that would be fun. But, uh, you know, my mother's a type one diabetic and, you know, she, there are signals when she's going into an insulin, uh, reaction, like clammy skin and other things. Right. You know, you can imagine many signals. You can imagine the case where maybe it would be predictive of my AFib if it knew enough signals of what was coming up, maybe, or, or an insulin reaction or, or a, uh, epileptic seizure or God knows what. With all the seizure, all the all the signals you can have. One of my one of Jake was teaching summer camp at ID Tech Camp a couple of years ago, and there was a kid there who had Tourette's, and he wanted to do an app that that checked his Tourette's ticks and moments because because it would predictably get worse or not. Uh, the, the the opportunities here are huge. But anyway, so so thanks to Vic, I, I paid for it. Let me be clear. Uh, but thanks to Vic for and, and his company for starting this. this I is, just ordered is, one, and I'm but I I think this would be I don't now. I didn't realize this. AFib is not a sign of a heart attack. It's a sign of a potential stroke. That's the risk. Well, no. Here's here's how it works. No, no. It could lead to a stroke. AFib is an irregular heartbeat. You yeah. lose sinus rhythm. Right. It's related. It can, can go into tachycardia, which is a very rapid irregular heartbeat. Right. And if it goes on for long enough, because the heart is so inefficient, pools of blood collected in the, in the and heart and become clots. Ah. And no, uh, no. When it goes back in, when it kicks back into yeah, full yeah. rhythm. Yeah, that's when the problem shoots is. So the what happens into your is, brain and you are sorry. Right. Yeah, or your lung or whatever. Right. Yeah. So what's what's so critical? I know this is lovely. Talk to Jeff. Do I hear about my prostate? Um, <laughs> so so what's so important about this is when I when I went in that Sunday night, I was supposed to go to Tokyo. I, you have 24 hours. If they believe you that you really haven't been in for a long time, and you really started 24 hours, then they can clear. You know, shock you back. But if you go past 24 hours, right. Well, this happened to me once because the damn doctor at the time didn't do it. Uh, I had to go through a 30-day regimen of blood thinning before they would shock me to be sure that I had no clots. All the time I was in tachycardia and I was and I had to travel to London. I was miserable. So now if I if I were, you know, and I haven't had AFib for 10 years until I got it two weeks ago. Right. But if you were worried about this, you could check yourself every day and then know within 24 hours you were regular and it was fine. And you can know for certain. I, I went to the hospital once and I didn't have AFib. I thought I might have. So it's a waste of time and resource. So this kind of stuff is just amazing. What a tiny little inexpensive thing. So, Dr. Martin, if I, uh, if I have some, if I'm worried, can I send you my uh, ACOR uh, <laughs> for reading? I'm just going to send it to Dr. <laughs> Mom in our chat room and she can. She could tell me. How, how, do, how does Dr. Mom like my AKG? Is it look all right? Okay, Dr. Mom? I mean, to me, as a complete layman, it looked excellent, Jeff. <laughs> the rhythm was, was beautiful. Just oh, beautiful. Dr. Mom said, said I explained it well. Thank you, Dr. Mom. I yeah. appreciate that. I find this uh, amazing, and especially really at $79. Yeah. Uh, can you do it? Can, but it's, it's active. It's not continual. It's not like, no, no. You no. have to say, oh, okay. I don't feel good. Let me try this. And then send you it to your doctor. Want, because you'd really become neurotic. Yeah. Well, oh. so I, I used to have a problem where I would faint if my heart uh, got too, my heartbeat got too fast. Um, so I think it was more my blood pressure would be too low. But wow. um, 
So they mm. they stuck me on a Holter monitor, and that thing was annoying. Yeah, it um, is. It is. So I'm like, oh, was, I would love oh, to so have. That's, yeah, that is interesting, Stacey. I think. I mean, the fingers, the pulse in the fingers, is what makes this work. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, but I wonder if they could do it otherwise, or make you do it once an hour or something like that. Yeah, I mean, because uh, right as I'm about to hit the floor. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Glow down clutching. <laughs> Doctor Doctor Mom says it looks like you're alive. Thank you, Doctor Mom. Yes, <laughs> according how, how to our, I owe you for that our best opinion? analysis. She already asked me who my insurance carrier was, so obviously she's a real doctor. Uh, <laughs> Um, anyway, I ordered one, Jeff. Just, I think that's probably a good thing for me to have around at my age, at oh. my weight. Uh, it's, uh, you know, and I go to the gym uh, every day, and I probably should bring it to the gym with me. Well, it's interesting too, yeah, because you, you get your, your your pulse rate. You can you can record it. You can see what's what. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then, Stacey, did you ever find the the, the database? Um, I, I found the website for the USC Center for Body Computing, and. Mm -hmm. That is that is where I stopped looking because I wanted to pay attention to you. Oh, I felt bad like oh. surfing the internet while we were talking. I don't but if I find this it's, also the relates Leo. Is, go ahead. Oh, it's Doctor Leslie go. Saxon. Oh, sorry, Leo, go. No, no, go. Go. no, I, go. you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie Saxon. We don't want you to faint. <laughs> I'm not going to faint. This is, this is I'm good now. <laughs> she grew out of it. I did. Yeah. Um, I know. I think this is. Uh, I mean, we talk a lot about kind of how everything is going to change, and but this is a palpable, useful, and affordable. Yeah, yeah. Solution. Uh, good for Vic for doing this. A live core. A L I. Well, what a different thing from Google Plus. Um, huh? That's what a different thing. Oh, from different. Google Plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very different technology. Yeah. So this, this is. I don't want to go into. By the way, speaking of this... AFib, Google Plus is still alive. <laughs> oh, that was cruel. Oh, that <laughs> they was have mean. applied the uh, the paddles to it a few times. Clear, clear. <laughs> or Vic. Well, I was just going to say one more thing. So this this also ties. I don't want to get it prematurely, but to your new advertiser, because the kind of data yes that you can tie to genetics and things like that, it, it really is going to make the analysis of, of ailments and genetics just so much better. So imagine if, if all of us who use this send in our heart rhythm um, to that certain new sponsor. You're you know what this would be so. good for? What's that? A Valentine's Day gift. <laughs> no. Here, no. honey. Okay. <laughs> no? No? Okay. Stacy, okay. when you get to be our age. Flowers see, or? That's okay. An AFib detector. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I've got some whacked out Valentine's Day. That's not present. very romantic, is it? <laughs> this is for your heart, honey. Your actual heart. Your actual heart. Um, I was gonna say, so do you actually do you want to use Jeff's awesome segue? Because you can. Um, no, go ahead and then I'll use Jeff's awesome segue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the um there is so we were talking about data, medical data. Now the only caveat I would throw on that is we don't medical data to your doctor is protected by HIPAA, but right. it's unclear yep. what well, can be done with this. That's if your doc, you know, okay. So the, the doctor had your a EKG, right. he couldn't send it through the public email to you. I don't think HIPAA prevents you from sharing your data in any way you want, including with your doctor. In other it words, you don't true. have any burden of privacy because it's your data. Right. So here's where this this is where it gets interesting because if my internet was working, there's a story in the New Scientist on dun dun dun. Oh my gosh, why is my internet so slow? Oh, we I need realized a, we why. need one of these for the internet. Yeah, give it um, a jolt. <laughs> this is this is about um, an insurance company that is analyzing your voice when you call into their help. Oh, I don't want so, that. Yeah, that's not it's good. U.S. startup Canary Speech is developing deep learning algorithms to detect if people have neurological conditions like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's just by listening to the sound of their voice. Oh, wow. And it's using phone calls to a health insurer oh my to God. train their – now, this is just to train their algorithm. Canary will not say who it is. It's a large American healthcare and insurance provider. But if you think about using something like that, um, without any data protections, plus you know your EKG data going in, all of a sudden you've really got your insurance company has yeah. possibly more information especially than your doctor as, does. As, yes, and especially as we lose um, prior condition coverage, 
It becomes yes. terribly damaging. So I, I'm just throwing that out there as we're in this like, hey, I, that's actually a reason I haven't done a lot of like the genetic testing and stuff like that because I'm really unsure about the protections available for my data. Right. And well, we, I was talking before the show about there's a, a big genome project going on. Um, I think a professor at Harvard, we talked to him on one of our shows years ago on uh, Futures in Biotech. And um, the idea was they were going to gather, it's called the Personal Genome Project. And I actually applied to be in this um, in order to participate. Because Leo is that public. Well, that's the thing. You have to be a very public person because the idea is they want to co collect full genotypes for as many people as they can, combined with your uh, phenotype, your medical history, and then give it to researchers. So they said, since we know we ultimately would not be able to protect your privacy, to participate in this, you have to acknowledge, we're just going to attach your name to it. Um, and I was going to do it. In fact, I did apply to do it. They never accepted me. But a number of people in the chat room pointed out, you know, it's not just your information you're handing over here. Your children could be tainted by the information that's publicly available about you. Mm -hmm. If you have a genetic flaw that's commonly passed down to children, you're in effect revealing something about them. And I hadn't really thought about that at all. I mean, I don't so care. I said this to Esther Dyson, who, who, she who did, did get in. Yes. And I said, well, Esther, as I was talking to the theory of it, um, yeah, I guess if I reveal my prostate cancer, reveal something about my son. And she said, go get over yourself, Jeff. Everybody gets it. <laughs> that's true. If you live long enough, every man, almost every man will get it. <laughs> uh, but 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 it is a legitimate point. Uh, I still would probably do it, but I would ask my kids' permission first. Um, I think this is, a, I mean, Esther did something and uh, that is a real gift to humanity, which is mm -hmm. basically give up her personal privacy to further genetic research. I think that's really, and I would, I would be glad to, I should, I should uh, offer again, you still have to, you have to pay for the, it was like fairly expensive. You have to pay for your testing. But imagine stuff. the price is coming down. Um, oh, gene, gene, you can do a whole genome for less than a thousand dollars. Thanks, Illumina. Yeah, it is, yeah. So it was fifteen hundred dollars, I think, when I uh, enrolled or attempted to enroll. I'm going to do it again because well, I think this would be. I mean, couldn't you just do it on your own? Oh yeah, I can go to who is it? Lugina, whoever. Who what? Who who is it? You said that's doing a thousand dollars. I'm making sure it's Illumina. 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 There's a security firm and the genetic testing firm that did it for under a thousand dollars. So I can't remember which one is yeah. which. Well. I mean, yeah, interesting. Boy, it's really an interesting world we're living in. Illumina. 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 Oh, that probably makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one knows. No one knows. Um, let's take a break. New Android Wear is, watches are here finally, and we're seeing reviews. Not so positive, frankly. I'm sorry to say. I was really looking. Well, some positive, some not. I'm really looking forward to getting these new Android Wear uh, watches. Um, Google's Super Bowl ad apparently affected some people with Google Homes in the same vicinity. We'll talk about that. And YouTube has expanded mobile live streaming to a whole lot more people. All coming up. Stacy Higginbotham is here. Stacy on IoT.com. Giga Yay! Stacy on the Twitter. Jeff. Yay. Jeff Jarvis, Yay! her biggest fan, Stacey's number here. one fan. Buzzmachine.com. And I do want to mention our new sponsor. And I and I think this would be a good Valentine's Day gift. It's 23andMe. I've done this. Have You did it, Jeff, right? I did it. I did it a long time ago. Long time my ago. My report is still there. From, it's, that's like Who, six years old, this was, was this Susan Wojcicki? Yes, at, at pardon yes. me for this, Davos. <laughs> Susan Wojcicki, who is of the famed Wojcicki family. Of course, mom, Esther Wojcicki famously leased her garage to a couple of young grad students named Sergey Brin and Larry Page. And as a result, uh, had uh, both she and daughter had, I think, some role in the founding of Google. Um, so uh, Susan created 23andMe, and it is an inexpensive way to find out some of your, it's a personalized genetic service based on the 23, that's where the pairs of chromosomes, that's the 23 comes from found in your dna and i've done this and jeff has done it and you know i was just going through my report before the because uh, i did this month years ago um and i just was going through my report because i haven't looked at it in a while 
And there's some cool stuff. They've added new stuff. For instance, I found an ancestor. By the way, I don't have a lot of Neanderthal in me. Um, I have 265 Neanderthal variants. I have 266. Beach up. Oh, crap. I am. I have less Neanderthal than 68% of 23andMe customers. My Neanderthal ancestry accounts for less than 4% of my overall DNA. However, I'm in fifth place out of family and friends. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go <laughs> i just think this is so cool and one of the things i discovered is a second cousin whose last name is the same as my grandmother's maiden name that is wild based on his 23 and me chromosomes and mine you also get a wellness report traits I found out that uh, you know my my hair is likely to be brown, my eyes likely to be brown. You the, actually, you know what? The most interesting one is the ancestry report. If you've ever wondered where your ancestors came from, here's my ancestry report. Mostly uh, European, in fact, all European. But this is by generation. So, the first three generations British and Irish, then go back three through five French and German, and then. If you go back five or generations or more, I have Scandinavian, Italian, Ashkenazi, Jew, and Iberian. I think this is so cool to find this stuff out. Based now, all I had to do was very simple: is a cheek, a saliva rather. It's not cheek swab. I just spit into a little uh, uh, tumbler, and then you send it back to 23andMe. You can see how your DNA breaks out across 31 populations worldwide. Found out where your ancestors lived more than 500 years ago. In fact, you can go further back. Over thousands of years, trace parts of your ancestry to maternal and paternal haplogroups. Find out how much Neanderthal DNA is in you. You can even connect with other people who share DNA with you. 23andMe has a very big database now, more than a million genotyped customers worldwide. So that's why when I went back to my ancestry report, I was able to find people I hadn't met before. And you can contact them, which is pretty awesome. Here's some, a second cousin, third and fourth cousins. And on and on and on. Based so let's look at this Anthony, who is shares my mother, my grandmother's maiden name. So I know that they kind of nailed it on this one. I can look at what genes we share in common. It's really cool stuff. And I was saying earlier that uh, before we were on that uh, I don't really know what my last name would be if my great grandfather had married my great grandmother. If you know what I mean? Yeah, but you find and out kind of where they're from. I think it might be Riley. I uh -uh. think it might be Riley. Well, look for some Irish it, in there. Yeah, well, I look, I look for that day. Well, well, yeah, I look for that day when, when, when 23 me gives me a relative named Riley, which would be cool. Uh, and also, I thought I had a lot of German in me um, just because that was the family lore. But it turns out I'm 63% British and Irish, only 7.4% yeah. German. So you and I are, have a lot in common, uh, as well as very, very white skin. <laughs> Like, yeah, I am, I am I'm very likely to be pale. 96% likely to have lighter skin. <laughs> so this is this is actually, they're going to do a $20 off for Valentine's Day. See, I think this would be, you could do it for you and a loved one. It would be so cool. Spit, 20, honey, spit. I don't, I think it is kind of romantic to find out this stuff, kind of stuff. And actually I was talking to uh, one of our uh, employees who's engaged to get married. She said, you better believe I'm going to get my, uh, my, my future husband to do this. It's kind of romantic. 23andme.com. 23andme.com. $20 off when you buy before Valentine's Day, a little less than a week. 23andme. I have to say, I did this a while ago, and I always thought it was super cool. And, uh, and, and what's interesting is as more people join the database, you get more and more information, which is... Very neat. I think it'd be cool to do it with your two kids and see what the differences are. I'd like to. You know? There's also, uh, and I think this is new, you can get the database of the entire, you can get your entire data, the raw data, that you can, you can download and do further analysis on. And I think as time goes by, um, this is going to be more and more useful, right? As we learn more and more about what these various genotypes mean what these markers mean. So you can actually search for specific genes and markers of interest. You can view or download your data at any time. It's raw, uninterpreted format. Your A's, your T's, your G's, and your C's. All right, here's your science test. Everybody remember what A, T, G, and C stand for? Adenine, cytosine, guanine, something. 
Very good. What's the T? Yeah, you did well. That's really good, Stacy. Nice. I wanted to be a. I wanted to be a genetic engineer. Very good. I'm impressed. Ah. Thymine, time. Thymine. Is it thymine? Okay, yes. Or timing. I don't. There. There we go. I couldn't remember. I am so impressed. Very ah. good. No, uh, I used to. We we did electrophoresis, like so in wow. high school. So we were doing like those CSI type. What matches with this? Those are the what are the it. four proteins that combine in your uh, in your DNA? That's all it takes. Yes, just four. Uh, thank you, twenty three and me, twenty three and me dot com two three and me dot com twenty dollars off when you buy before Valentine's Day, a little less than a week. I'm glad to have you as a sponsor. I've been a customer for a long, long time. Android Wear two point we knew it would come out this week. It is official. Uh, and as a result, we're seeing the first, a lot of reviews of the first Android Wear 2.0 watch, the LG watch, Sport and Style. Uh, both have PO LED displays, four gigs of storage, Wi Fi, and Bluetooth. Um, there are two different uh, specs, though. Uh, there's the, the Sport has a built in gyroscope, accelerometer, barometer, and GPS. And it's also bigger, 1.38. Lots inch. of antennas, too. Tons LTE of LTE and NFC. And this is the one I want to get because you can use it with Android Pay, kind of like an Apple Watch, right? Also, uh, it's got more RAM and a much bigger battery. So the Sport is the one probably most of you want to look at, except if you've got small wrists because it's a lot bigger. 1.38-inch screen compared to the Style's 1.2-inch screen. The Style's also lighter. It has about half the battery. Three color options, too, titanium, rose gold, and silver. Straps are leather, but no LTE, no GPS, no NFC, no Android Pay. Cost difference? Uh, the Wear Style is the cheaper one at two forty nine, hundred bucks more for the Wear Sport. You can get it from Google or at AT and T or Verizon. In fact, let me run, not walk. I didn't see it. I I just checked the Google store and I didn't see it. Huh? Say again. Ten on the tenth. Oh crap! Well, oh. I guess I'll be getting up early on the tenth. So, so that's a good Valentine's Day present. <laughs> you know, I yeah, maybe. Do you think? I I do. I mean, watches are. You would. Like, yeah. I would. Well, if your husband or wife is a runner, actually, you know yeah. what? Yeah, uh, maybe. Lisa and I have wait wait till next week. Apple watches. Yeah, wait till next week. Because Kevin will buy one super fast, and he'll tell me because yeah, he's an Kevin actual Tofel, runner. He's a runner. Uh, it does what have Google Assistant these? in it, by the way, which is a big deal because you could only get it on the Pixel before. Okay, I have a really oh. random question I yeah. have to ask you guys. Yeah, y'all are super blurry. Everything on my on the camera is super blurry. Is it super blurry for anyone check, else? Check your heart, uh, Stacy. Check your heart. Quick, don't you get her. Heart. Get you, her one of those okay? alive cores. You doing all right? Uh, you all right, lie down. Stacy, you, put you okay? both hands over your head. S <laughs> smile no yeah if if we're blurry uh it's probably some we've been having a little trouble today with skype you look great and sound great you're man. looking good so it is great <laughs> that's good but great I, I wasn't fishing guys i was just like maybe something is happening with my vision that's what i'm saying put both hands <laughs> over your head the hands up okay everybody worry about smile. dr mom she can be okay <laughs> all right all right so obnoxious. We are so obnoxious. Carry on. Uh, yeah, we're. Back to yeah, watches. it's Skype, not you. It's you. Okay. <laughs> is it me or is it Skype? It's Skype. Doc, doctor, my my Skype hasn't been feeling too good yeah. lately. I, I I don't know what it is. It's yeah. it's it's blurring on me, doctor. Um, uh, Pixel and Pixel XL have taken first and second place in Business Insider's list for the best smartphones. In the world. It is a great phone, I gotta say. Number 20, BlackBerry Classic. <laughs> Number 19, BlackBerry Priv. Number 18, Moto G4. 17, G5, LG. Galaxy Note 5. Number 16, that's a year-old phone. I like this one, the Axon 7. That's a nice phone from ZTE, only 400 bucks. The LG V20, the HTC 10, the Moto Z. The Huawei Mate 8, 9, the OnePlus 3T, comes in at number 10. iPhone SE, which was a big bestseller, the 5-inch iPhone, comes in at number 9. Then the 6S, I guess they don't care about time. If it's still available, I guess it could be on this list. The 6S Plus is number 7. The S7 is number 6. 
If I'm not confusing you with the numbers. That's confusing. This S7 Edge is number five. I agree with that one. That's a nice phone. If you can get over the Samsung cruft. iPhone 7 number four. I think a lot of people might be a little upset to see the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 7 Plus number three so low because besting the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, Google's Pixel XL. And the best phone is the little Pixel. Oh, no. I don't know why. It's the one I it's carry. Royal Blue. Yeah, I didn't get the blue one. I thought that was dopey. Um, <gasps> really? Would you you would go for the color? That was that was, that was my choice. Well, here's the Royal reason I, I don't want it is because it's only 32 gigs of storage. Oh, okay, yeah. Everything I have is in the cloud. I don't care. Yeah, 32 is actually for probably enough, but I, I hate to buy a phone with 32. It's okay. Yeah, I, how much did I get? I forgot. The uh, the Business Insider folks say the, that it had the screen on the Pixel is is lighter, is better, and has useful features like fast charging that are missing in the iPhone. It's quite nice, I gotta say. I was I was I was you know my usual grumpy self well, at the beginning, but the, I was wrong. On the face of it, in fact, somebody had somebody sent me an email saying, "I I know I know you like the Pixel, but I said it back. It's so boring. It is boring looking. It's not very beautiful." But it's I a think phone, it's, people. It's a phone. It's very functional. I'm pro function. I don't need a lot of sex appeal in my devices. What I do you be carry? Honest. I carry the Nexus 5X. That's right. That's right. Because I, I wasn't convinced that I needed to upgrade for the latest and greatest. I'm still not really super convinced. Would you get uh, the smaller or the bigger one? The smaller. I'm a I'm a one handed caller. Yeah. So I've been very happy with the Pixel, the the little one. Uh, and it works with VR, too, although that seems counterintuitive, but you can use the Dream. By the way, Verizon is feeling terrible that people can't get the Pixel from it, so they're now giving you a free Google Daydream visor if you buy it from them. The weights are the, long. The, sweat, the sweatpant. Really? The sweatpant, the sweatpant VR. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Here's one for the ladies. Uh oh! I'm like I don't. I'm, I'm ducking. Ready? Go. <laughs> Google. Is, <laughs> I couldn't resist. Google's helping H and M construct a custom dress based on your personal data. That's why I say it's for the ladies because I don't wear dresses. Now if oh, they do, yeah, I can I, see you doing it because you're curious about the data. But, I would do yeah. it. Uh, I like kilts. If they did a skirt, I'd wear it. You know, I I used to. There was a company that fitted you for bras based on your data. And everybody else's data, and that actually worked out really well. So I would buy a dress. Do you go was, into a booth and they take three D pictures of you, or for the data dress or for the bras? For the bras. Oh, for the bras. You answer a questionnaire. Really? No measurements. Yeah, and it was super accurate. That was what was kind of stunning to me. Uh, it's not that odd. Um, I mean, it's basically like here are things we think predict how a bra is going to fit. Then they give them to you, and you tell it, and it's based on what you send back. Oh, so it's not size, then, it's just design. No, no, no. Well, it's it's size. Size too? And, oh, okay. Yeah, well, it's size and how you're like, Shape. likely to fit. Yeah, every, whether every you bra, run a lot or, you know, stuff like that. Something like that. So I don't want to yes. go too far down this road and get in trouble, but but they're on, on, in the subways in New York, they're advertising a bra and, and billboards in New York with no straps and no back. It's oh, like little cups? The cups. It's called suction cups. How does it cups. stay, well, yeah, how does it stay on? Adhesive. And how does it do its Adhesive. job? Adhesive, really? yeah. Ooh. Yeah, you, I, you're I, not going to be able to jog or run a marathon no. if you're a big It's so you can wear a strapless it. dress or, you know, an off-the-shoulder oh. dress and you don't want to see oh, any okay. lines. It just, it, it just. <laughs> Google fashion tape, Jeff, and you're going to be, it's a whole world of exciting yeah. things. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Fashion oh, I had no tape. idea. Okay. All right. So I was just trying to figure out the, the engineering of it fashion tape requires a lot of engineering got it got it so the, um, what does the dress okay. do leo <laughs> thank you <laughs> let me get out of this before I get drunk. so hard not to say anything uh <laughs> google's teaming up with a digital fashion house don't know what that means ivy revel which is backed by h&m backed by h&m they're working together on an android app that will track Wherever users go, the weather where they live, and whether they're having casual or formal hangs. This is, no. this is the verge. Yeah, I don't know what a hang is. With that information, Ivy, yeah, whether, you know, whether they're, do you go to f casual in, uh, events or formal events? And oh, then, that's, oh, got it. Hangs, I think.
And then, and that's, you know, like hangouts, right? And right. then they're going to design an individualized data dress that you can buy. Um, <laughs> it sounds like the bra, frankly. Um, so if you're in Sweden, it'll be black velvet because it's cold. And if you like to go out dancing, it'll have diamond details. There's not really that much tech in it. Uh, but no. Google has, see, this is based on Google's awareness API, which uses all the sensors on the phone. And actually, you know, the mostly where I hear about the awareness API is as a, a form of authentication, right? So based on your gate, where you go, uh, Google can uniquely identify you, but they also can use, use this, you know, it knows whether you've got headphones plugged in, where you did that, what weather conditions were. And then somehow it makes a dress based on that. The dress starts at ninety nine dollars, which is in the in the world of fashion not not a whole heck of a lot of money. It would be interesting so it's if a they way paired for them that to with personalize. Sorry. No, I, I I still don't understand what phone data is going to contribute to your. Well, like I said, if you live dress. in Sweden, they'll make it warmer. If right. You, if you like to <laughs> dance a lot, they'll make sure there's slits down the side or whatever it is people need for dancing. <laughs> Okay, that's stupid. This is dumb. If you're going to use data... Use it seriously, for if you're good, not use, evil. No, it's this is just dumb. It's not even evil. Um, it's yeah, just, you're it's right. not very interesting, I have to agree. If, no, if you, Sorry, I put it in the rundown. No, I mean, it's, it's a... Using that type of data to market products or offer products to people is interesting. It's just... That use case doesn't make a no, lot of sense. You could just ask somebody, or maybe even better, have a rack where people can look at dresses and say, that would work with my lifestyle. Ooh, that's interesting. Right? What a thought. Well, that's Like, what if I'm going to Sweden, but Google doesn't know yet? The Google you doesn't know. To... Oh, I but it does, because I bought airplane tickets. It no, oh, it does know. It knows. The Google right? knows all. It knows. Okay. It knows all. Like, I, I love the idea of, like, being able to say, like a bunch of people who are your height bought this and it fit too small or this fits that's, generally too that's small. That's like your June yeah. oven, right? That's that kind of data feedback is great. Right. And um, is it Amazon actually does 3D scans of shoes now? And so you tell it what kind of how your shoes typically fit for you and then they match it to the particular shoe you're looking at and they're like, you should buy a size smaller in this shoe. Well, that's interesting. So that's useful. This is a company they bought last year called... Uh, Shoe fitter. Yes. <laughs> and you, you put your foot inside it? No. Uh, oh. They scan the shoe and then... Oh, they scan the asks, shoe. Oh, okay. Like, I just bought some shoes and they're like, how do athletic shoes normally fit on you? What oh, that's you good. That's So it's kind of... So do you like these? What do you not like? When I went to buy running shoes, I went and I was strongly recommended that I do this to a, a, a store where you actually... They look at your gait. And they and they say you pronate in, and you need a shoe that's going to mm -hmm. give you better support here. I mean, a, a, I mean that kind of customization. I don't think Google could do. I really think somebody who. Oh, would... oh, you ready? There's a company called Sensoria. They yeah. make connected socks, <laughs> <laughs> and they I will tell you. you. <laughs> they will tell you. They look at your gait, and they tell you if you pronate, if you whatever the other one is, and how you run and what types of shoes would work better for you. So it's out there, Leo. I need connected socks. That's Truth for sure. Truth is out there. They see. Oh, yeah. oh you found them. Yes. They, they smart socks. They, I think do sports like sports bras and other things too. So it's, it's not just like, it's so you can run better basically. Oh yeah. There's, there's a sports bra. No relation to the 2015 horror film about Caroline a woman in her late 30s who is searching for a new beginning and realizes she is not as alone as she <laughs> thought she was in her new apartment. Not that sensoria. I don't know. That's a With these connected socks, you might not be as alone as you thought you were. That's a little different. The um, socks are really soft too, guys. They're very good for Oh, me. you have them? And they, I, I have reviewed them, yes. You have connected socks. Wow. I, I, used to, I, gave, I sent them back. Aren't you afraid of when insurance companies get your connected sock data? Um, no, because I, I don't usually run a lot, so they'd be okay. They'd be like, oh, this person is a couch potato. See, I, you know, this whole thing, this is, of course, uh, the argument, one of many, but this is the, the kind of chief argument people use about privacy is, oh, you're not going to want insurance companies to deny you coverage because they saw you ate an extra donut. 
Um, but I always thought that that might be a red herring because my experience when you apply for life insurance is uh, they not only do they send a nurse out and take all your vitals, they have a long questionnaire in which they ask you all sorts of ridiculous things. Do you climb on ladders? How often do you climb on ladders? How high are the ladders? Do you ever wear a safety harness when you climb on ladders? And, and I realize the point is not to screen you out beforehand, but if you lie... Then and they, which they hope you will do. They hope you will say no. I don't smoke yes. and I don't climb on ladders. Because then, when you do die from falling off a ladder, they can deny you your heirs any money. So I don't think they need all this information because they just put it in the questionnaire, and they're praying you're going to lie. They don't want to know really what you do. They want to be able to. What they want is to collect premiums but not pay out. Right, Gosh, Leo. That is that is such a cynical view of insurance. No, it's exactly how it works. Well, exactly. It's not even cynical. <laughs> An evil industry. It, no, it's this profit. <laughs> it's capitalistic. Oh, you know, and someone, lately, someone, you think insurance companies want to pay your insurance? No. Um, of course not. No, it's all based on actuarial data. There is a really cool thing if you want to go nerdy on what real time masses of easily collected data on people means for actuarial predictions but that's that's yeah of course so the, so actuarial is just statistical and frankly that's sufficient for them right they just t take a population pool and you know 13 percent of those people are going to die of a heart attack in the next three years and so they make the insurance premium such that they will still make a profit if that happens it's all math i understand that but the question is are they interested in this kind of additional thank you very much this is the Actuary Magazine, in case you'd like to subscribe. Are, are they interested in the data, you know, from your from your TiVo and your and your Vizio and all of this stuff in, in order to somehow deny you coverage? No, I don't think they are. I think they don't care about that. A, because of the, the statistics, but B, because they want your they want to give you coverage. They just don't want to pay you. So all of their energy is fig, is is in figuring out how to avoid paying off, not in not getting new coverage customers in medical insurance it might be different in medical insurance they definitely want to screen out people who are going to cost them money they'd like young healthy people obviously but you know, so so i've been thinking about this lately they're they're you know insurance is is selling fear right it's fear that you're gonna die and your well, family's gonna I would, be i would submit there's a difference between or, life insurance and health insurance yes I, I agree i agree with that but various things can sell fear and then i've been thinking lately about all the fear i hear advertised all over, right? The ADT commercials about, you know, here, here's the nice uh, white male who's worried about his uh, fear uh, wife who Fear's says a nothing as there is as there is a, a dark force behind, yeah. right? There's things about your identity and your credit and your data. There's a, there's a serious add on right now that has a new thing that women should carry in their purses, they say, that acts like a cat's claw and not only harms your attacker, but also collects DNA. <laughs> <laughs> this is an ad. This is an ad on Sirius. But wow. there's, there's, you could just get DNA under your fingernails. Yeah, just scratch them. That's good enough. Uh, well, um, so Jeff, so I, the, the, I would submit it's because of, of what you listen to. Yeah, I don't, I don't get those uh, ads. It's the media you're following. I've never heard of that. Um, well, I, I get hopeful to, no, here, no, Here's about, what it is. It's serious. Yeah, it's serious. And I listen oh, to the yeah. talk stuff. I listen yeah. to like MSNBC on Sirius. So when the yeah. TV gets the real commercials, I get the really I have a lot of experience with this because I've worked in radio for 40 years. And right. radio discovered this. And you saw about 20 years ago with the advent of Rush Limbaugh that a certain kind of programming did very, very well. And it has taken over the at least the AM radio spectrum completely, 100%. And, uh, you know, it's just, it. yes, it works. But I think we're moving into an age, and we know this from from uh, Trump's Facebook advertising and the Cambridge Analytica stuff, where they will target an ad to your mental state. So for some people like Stacy, they may not target her with fear ads. They may target her with let's make the world a better place ads. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's what they target you with. Probably. Or food. I really like food. <laughs> or let's eat more. <laughs> <laughs> but they know that, by the way, Stacy. They know that exactly. So I think I that that's kind of old world is scare everybody. And, all, you know, I mean, not to get political, but uh, it's pretty clear that that was Trump's message throughout the campaign, even at his inaugural speech in the American carnage speech, um, that that fear was very effective 
to get him elected. But I think we're getting even more sophisticated than that. Fear works in a general with a general brush. But some people it doesn't. I don't think Stacey probably responds well to the fear message. I would almost guarantee you. Right? Try me. Scare me. Uh, let's see. What would scare Stacy? Stacy, you know that all those internet things, devices in your house are providing a target for hackers who can get in, reach in, see everything you're doing, and kidnap your child. I, I know that's not true, but okay. Son of a bitch. She's smart. <laughs> this is why fear may not work for me. Well, Pretty I rational. was always told, and I, I've told this story before, but when at Tech TV, when I was talking about how we should really aim for the smart technology enthusiast programmers, I said there are 14 million programmers in the U.S. at the time. Why aren't we aiming at them? That's a great audience. And the, the boss said, Leo, let me tell you something. <laughs> Brand is the refuge of the ignorant. Advertisers don't want smart people because, like Stacy, they know, oh, I'm not scared. Oh, you can't scare me. So they I want. I mean, you can scare me. That just didn't scare me. <laughs> okay. But seriously, they don't want people who are too sophisticated because you people do research on products and try to be rational and blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'll so scare Stacy. Go ahead, scare Stacy. Oh, scare me. You you know you can get food allergies in the middle of life. <laughs> That's scary. Oh, that is scary. <laughs> but not to anything good, right? Is there anything I could do? Is oh, there wait been. a minute? Is Jeff, is there anything I could buy to prevent that? <laughs> Are there allergies? No, you drops? just have to you have to buy a new a new uh, diet that only gives you so after after the AFib, people have their own cures. Yeah. You drink a lot of water. Yeah, I was yeah. probably dehydrated. But then yeah. it, it, inevitably carbs. Carbs give you, ah, we've been, we've been eating bread Jeff, for a Jeff, you're time. gluten intolerant. That's why. I'm not giving up my bread. Jeff, and my you've got to stay away from the bacon. gluten. So my pizza. Not doing it. Here's the, the ultimate running bra that just happens to be smart. Oh, uh, you're going to get us in trouble now, aren't you? Ohm bra, not not the related Ohm to Ohm Malik. Yes, you know about those this. guys are great. Okay, I do. I okay. have not tried. They didn't have a running bra. They just had a fitted shirt when I was trying my connected? connected clothing. It is. It, well, it's got sensors in it and it coaches uh, battery you. pack. It and coaches, it coaches you. you. Yeah. Say goodbye to bounce. Say hello to comfort. <laughs> That's a big deal, you guys. Okay. You move and bounce. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. Well, we, we have some of those issues. Oh, as I'm well. getting to know it, Stacey, as I get older. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually very Sorry. cool. I would get this. I should. Oh, now I should they get have, this. They have a shirt. For a me. Valentine's gift. What What was it on 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 Seinfeld? Was it the man's ear? Man's ear. Man's ear. Yes. I, st oh, so tell me, is this a would this be a bad Valentine's Day <laughs> gift? Um, if. For Lisa or for you? No, for Lisa. I don't need a bra. <laughs> they, okay, they, they have a shirt, you guys. They have a fitted shirt for boys or men. <laughs> no, no, um, he's asking for Lisa. No, but I'm thinking for a Valentine's Day so for Lisa. If Lisa is into fitness and runs. She's training yes. for the uh, Avon walk to oh, that's right. for the cure. Oh. Okay, yes. But if not, if then you're telling her something that no woman wants her husband to tell her, which is get off the no, couch. No, 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 no. She's a fitness She's fitness okay. all then into you're it. Fine. That's all good. over. Now, but I have a problem. Okay. <laughs> Tell me your problem, Leo. Oh, I can't. I don't know what size to get. That, that's another problem oh, for another day. That's a different problem. Yeah. We, we can talk about that offline. That's what guys, they go into Victoria's Secret and they say, she's oh, yeah. about, she looks like, she's about your size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She looks just like you. What? what uh, you know, <sighs> people used to tell me that a lot when I was younger. Not so much Not so now. much? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, the bro. They're saying the Seinfeld man's ear was called the bro. Oh, nice. That was the man's ear? What size, baby? Oh, she doesn't want one. Never mind. Oh. No, it's, a, it's like it measures. No, it would help. No. I'm going to be on her list. She's going to be like, Stacy. It's not Stacy. I came up with that one. Okay, got it. She came running in and said, don't get that. Okay, good. How do you feel about a. a uh, how? What? If it's not diamonds. Not even if it were to detect yeah. your afibrillation. Oh, yeah. no? Okay. <laughs> right. I better cancel that order. Diamonds. She wants diamonds. I, I have some lovely connected jewelry I can tell you about. Really? <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, no, she doesn't want anything connected. In fact, she, yeah. we, she started wearing, uh, you know, I said, well, because you're training, you're, uh, you should wear your Apple Watch. It would help you with the training. She, she tried it for, she, I hate this thing. She doesn't want all that stuff. Uh, Google, 
Google overtakes Apple as the world's... You know, I didn't do this story on MacBreak Weekly, and I probably shouldn't do it on This Week in Google. It comes from it's a... It's so meaningless. It's just dumb. It comes from a, a company... Even the name of the company should tell you. Startup Echo. The world's most valuable brand, Google. Apple's dominance has ended. Oh, actually, this comes from Brand Finance. Startup Echo is just repeating it. Google is now oh. the king of all brands. But they, I don't even know how they measure that, right? Brand goodwill. Yeah. It says Apple has failed to maintain its technological advantage, has repeatedly disillusioned its advocates with tweaks when material changes were expected. I wouldn't disagree with this. Apple overexploited the goodwill of its customers, mainly because of its failure to generate significant revenues from products like the Apple Watch and its inability to demonstrate that genuinely innovative technologies are desired by consumers that are desired by consumers are already in the pipeline. I think that's accurate. Uh, what do they say about Google? Google has definitely benefited from increased revenue. Brand strength score is also a factor in its success. Its brand strength score was up by two points, indicating underlying brand equity. Higher brand equity means the brand is more likely to retain customers. Well, where are you going to go? Even command a premium price. Number three, Amazon. Number four, AT&T. I don't think so. What? I don't what? think so. I guess they include I, I, revenue in this. It's not, there, I don't know what the methodology is, but. All right. I have a story I want to ask you guys about because I, okay, I don't know what this is going to mean. Let's, but I take feel... a, let's take a break and we will mansplain anything you want. <laughs> I look forward to it, Leo. I know. You can't wait, can you? Stacy Higginbotham, Stacy on IOT, Giga Stacy on the Twitter. She's keeping it real, baby. Keeping it real for us old men. Jeff Jarvis. Old man. Old man from buzzmachine.com and the city you I used to be a wunderkind. When did that what? end? Were you a wunderkind? I was never oh, a sure. wunderkind. Sure. I was, I was that's really. That's another uh, way to say obnoxious. I was an underachiever really until I, uh, until later in life. Oh, some may say really? still. <laughs> 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 I'm not an overachiever. I've never been an overachiever. Uh, you know who's an overachiever? Quicken Loans. Quicken Loans has become, over the last couple uh, of years, the, the lar second largest mortgage lender in the country and the best. You can. You can be both, right? Well, if you knew who number one was, you'd agree. The best. All you have to do is go to the website, quickenloans.com slash twig, and take a look at the list of J.D. Power Awards starting in 2010. Highest customer satisfaction in the U.S. for primary mortgage origination and mortgage servicing. And you know what? They've got a new product that is designed just for us, the geeks. It's called Rocket Mortgage because it's completely online. It's fast, it's powerful, it's 21st century. Go weightless with Rocket Mortgage. You can literally apply for a loan on your phone, from your couch, or even from the open house. It's a transparent online process that gives you the confidence to make an informed decision. You don't even need to go through your stacks of paperwork. You can share financial info right there on the phone. They have little sliders. You can adjust the rate and length of your loan in real time. So you get the solution that fits your needs. Whether you're looking to buy a new house or refinance your old, you can lift the burden of getting a home loan right now. Lift it with, get it, with Rocket Mortgage. How many more Rocket funds can I get in there? You got to get somebody you trust with your best interest in mind, and that's Rocket Mortgage. Completely online so you can skip the bank, skip the waiting at quickenloans.com slash twig. Quickenloans dot com slash twig equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states nmls consumer access dot org number 30 30 rocket mortgage from quicken loans okay stacy let us mansplain the world to you <laughs> god with an offer like that how yes could i refuse what an offer um okay what, what so are you doing for valentine's day oh my husband is taking me out to my favorite restaurant Aww. which i haven't been to in like four years Four months. Is dare I ask what your favorite restaurant in Austin is, or is that a I secret you. you don't want to tell everybody? No, I, I love it so much, but apparently I don't go often enough. So everyone should go. It's Pesce and it's delicious. And is it they Italian? make the best No, it's it's um French food, I believe, Ooh. even though Yeah, it's French. Yeah, Italian. that's French uh Pesce. Fish. Pesce. Pesce is for fish, yeah. Pescado. Pescado. Um, it is, Entrée they make pêché. pre-prohibition cocktails. <gasps> and the guy 
who runs it is just the most nice, the most enthusiastic. And you walk in and you're like, hey, I love this drink. And he's like, I got something for you. And then he whips up something or tells somebody else to whip something up and he gives it to you. And you're like, oh, this is perfect. Or you're like, oh, this is too sweet. And he's like, okay, now I really know what you like. And then he's, I love that restaurant. I love the vibe. When you come to town, bring your husband and Lisa and I will take you to our favorite restaurant uh, up in Healdsburg, uh, Madrona, Casa, Casa Madrona. And, and Pam, the bartender, is just like that. We're in love with the bartender. And she'll, she, when we come in, she says, oh, hi, I have something for you. Yes. I love we that. Last, yeah, we were last there. He brought out like uh, an Amaro. So just some local Italian thing that he picked up. That, like He was like, oh, I was in Italy in 1977 and I picked this up. You <laughs> wow. want to taste it? And I'm like, that is older than I am. Yeah. Yeah. That is awesome. No, a great bartender makes a great restaurant. I mean, it's a great, this is a wonderful restaurant. We love, and we'll take you too, Jeff. Come on out. Um, yep. But uh, Pam, the last time we were there, we were there for their uh, Dickens. They have a Dickens dinner for Christmas. And oh. she had, she had made eggnog. She'd barrel aged her own eggnog for three months and, and, and put this amazing brand. It was so good. And she's like that. It's like, it's like cooking a good bartender. It's like cooking, isn't it? I, I, I'm taking you up on it. All right. You come up here, and then when we're in Austin, we'll go to Peche with you. Well, boom. Done. Good, good for okay. Valentine's Day. That sounds great. What are so, you doing for Leo, Valentine's speaking Day? Speaking of Austin. Yes. How, how many years since you've been to South by Southwest? Oh, many. I, I wish I could go this year. I would like to go, but I'm... Come. I should. You can come it's just a party. I We used to go because yeah. I felt like, well, there's going to be news here because... Twitter broke no, out there. Foursquare broke out there. Right. And now it's just a, it's really a now social it's just, event. It, it's not, nothing wrong with it, but I'm not good. I, I can't You could justify. shoot the show from the rooftop deck. I know. Oh, wouldn't oh. that be fun? Yes, it We would. did shows from South by, uh, uh, we did a, a couple oh, of Oh, boy, did ago. you ever. Yeah. Were you at yeah, that? it was fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you were. I'm, I'm so hurt you didn't remember. It was so much fun, wasn't it? Are it you great. going to, <laughs> Jeff? No. No, yeah, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah. All right. Well, I'll be there. It's in March, April? March. March usually, right? 9th yeah, through 13th. Oh, oh, but wait, I haven't asked you. Y'all still have to mansplain something to me. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Oh, this God. is the Google, like Google, Now, <laughs> Google Now launcher app possibly being oh, yeah. removed. Uh, yeah, let me what? explain that to you, little lady. What does that mean? <laughs> Leo, where's my punch Leo button? Sweetie. Where is it? Let me tell you, sweetie. Come over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you don't use the Google Now launcher, so you don't care. It's not what happens when I show up when I scroll over in my Nexus. Actually, you might it's, you might be using that now. Does it yeah. does it look like here? So Hold on. so my... this so what we're talking about is the stock launcher on Google phones. Yeah, that's this so thing? you slide left, you get now. Uh huh. Yeah, that's what you're using. But oh, the, I love that. The, well, the Pixel has a very similar launcher. Yeah. I don't have the Pixel. No, but I think that they, they will just offer, for, well, first of all, because you have a 5X, you're going to keep, I think you'll still have the Now Launcher. I don't know. I'm not mansplaining this so good. Uh, but this, but the okay. Pixel Launcher is the same. The only thing is it has Assistant. But you swipe left for Google Now. And and you don't hit the center button at the bottom to get the apps. You just scroll up. Oh, you don't get, yeah. You Okay, so that, some people, at first bothered me. because oh, you it, don't. It, 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 I still, I end up in launching Messenger all the time when I don't want to. You know how on your dock, Stacy, mm -hmm. you have two icons and then an apps icon and then two more icons. They they got rid of the apps icon, so now you can have five icons on the bottom. But and that bothered me at first. I thought, well, how do I get to my app store? You just slide up to go to the app store, and that actually becomes a very intuitive move. Okay, yeah, okay. Then I can handle. It's good. This. It's I just, good. It's fine. I, I liked having. I liked being able to flip over and get the weather and some news stories Still can and my do that. shipments. That's not changed. Look into that. Okay. Then I feel good. Thank you, yeah, guys. Yeah, I, I think Google's part of Google's problem is they have way too many <laughs> versions of everything, right? And I wish they'd do the same with their messaging apps, just prune a few of them out. Um, so, the, so yeah, they're going to discontinue it, They apparently, because they have two. I presume that the Pixel Launcher will take over the, where the Google Now Launcher is. But many of us, one of the reasons I don't pay any attention to this, I don't use either. I use uh, Active Launcher. A lot of people, I, for years, I use Nova Launcher. A lot of people use third party launchers. We don't use the stock. Google I don't do that. You guys are so like cutting edge and no, cool. We're just geeks. We like to 
Marty. Twiddle stuff, yeah. It, we're really twiddlers. I am, not Jeff. I'm a twiddler. Um, okay. So they're going to remove it from the optional uh, Google services package starting the first of next month. So existing devices can continue to use the Google Now launcher, and it will still be updated using the Google Play Store, but it just won't be listed in the Google Play Store as a separate download. And future Google devices, including the rumored new Pixels coming out, I guess, later this year, will all have the Pixel launcher on it, not the Google Now launcher. Not a big loss. I, don't, I think that that's a minor. It was just two different code bases they didn't really need. Okay. Yeah, there's... That's a, good, that's a good question, and it made me feel very manly to answer that. <laughs> I, uh, feel the, I feel very patronized now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff and I both know you're much smarter than us. So The world I, is an I, amen. We're not, amen. believe me, in any way diminishing yep. your brains. Yep, we know better and older. We're, yeah, we're older, too, so we lose whatever brain power we had, we're losing. Did you just so say you, you were advantage. born after 1977, Stacy? Yes. Oh, my God. God. That 1977 was, was a long time ago. That I mean, was the year I would have graduated from college had I continued. Okay. It was a oh. year after I began my career in broadcasting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, just checking. I, I don't know what I mean. Like, I have ties older than you. Isn't I was an assistant city editor of the Chicago Tribune. <laughs> No, they're coming back in style, Stacy. It's good news. <laughs> <laughs> they're this wide. Excellent. Okay. Um, you want to talk about the fine from the FTC, or do you want to talk about? Yes, that's see. that's. Uh, oh, we got the Vizio story. We've got Google's uh, court loss. Let me start. Oh, yeah. Let me start with this one. Uh, so Microsoft, a district court last year ruled that Microsoft did not have to hold, hand over information to U.S. law enforcement that was stored in a server in Ireland. This is a magistrate, so it's, lo it's a lower court than the district court. Magistrate Thomas Reuter in Philadelphia ruled on Friday that Google did have to hand over data stored outside the United States. He ruled that transferring emails from an international server so FBI agents could review them locally as part of a domestic fraud probe did not qualify as a seizure. You're not, so I guess, I gather he would say, well, if you were seizing data held in a warehouse in Ireland, say, like I would stop you from doing that. But since you're just asking Google, copy this data over to the U.S. server so we can see it, the judge says there's no meaningful interference with the account holder's possessory interest in the data salt. So that should be, Legal. He wrote, through the retrieval of the electronic data by Google from its multiple data centers abroad, I'm sorry, though the retrieval, has the potential for an invasion of privacy. Potential, the actual infringement of privacy, occurs at the time of disclosure in the United States. I'm not sure I disagree with this. Well, isn't the arguing, I mean, isn't the argument about possessory interest simply because... He's saying they they don't have to have a hard time physically delivering the right. product that it right. doesn't count. Right. But all digital information would be subject to that then. Right. Because it's not hard to grab digital information. In fact, Google said, and I think they didn't help, well, we don't even know where the emails lie. There, we For re, for practical reasons, we distribute them all over the place. And if, in effect, that sounds to me like Google's, in, and they didn't mean it this way, but that what Google's saying is, well, it's, it's physical location is not material. Um, because we don't even know where it is. It's just it's just in the cloud. And I think the judge was quite rightly saying, well, this doesn't harm the uh, defendant because it doesn't matter where it is. It's, it's bits that are stored, you know, in this imaginary space. You, it's re it, isn't it kind of ridiculous to say, well, one-third of the email is on a server in Germany, one-third of the email is a server in Italy, and one-third is in the United States... Well, but the issue why should that, becomes, those two thirds be protected? Well, because of all those other countries who don't want it on American servers because right, of what we can do. To well, I agree there's exactly political. No, no, I understand the political issues. But the judge isn't supposed to, rev, you know, consider the implication. The judge is supposed to say, well, does this fit the law or not? The I agree that really there's. not supposed to consider implications? Well, I don't know. I mean, that seems like a lot to say to the judge, well, 
you got to see this is going to cause us political trouble or this is going to cause a company economic trouble. I think you'd have to argue that. I don't think Google argued that. But you could now you could argue that this is outside of the FBI is it, it was the FBI outside of their jurisdiction, jurisdiction because the data is not in the US. Well, what if Although, a third of the email is and Google handles hands that third over which isn't very useful uh, because it's on like every third bit. Um, I don't see why data should be protected just because Google's process involves spreading it around. Uh, their legal argument may be flawed. I'm not, <laughs> but if you think about this in a bigger picture, it, it does open us up to lots of problems. Yeah, I mean, certainly I agree with that. I mean, I understand okay. why Microsoft doesn't want to be liable for something held on a server in Ireland. And Russia, for instance, says you can't, like Russia put LinkedIn out of, kicked LinkedIn out of Russia because they don't store the data on Russian servers. So Russia doesn't have access to the data. But I think we also should be reasonable, shouldn't we, about balancing the needs for law enforcement to do their job. I mean, how much of a harm is this to somebody you don't think about when you put something on Gmail, you're not thinking, well, thank goodness Gmail's being stored somewhere else. You don't even think about that. Well, but if you're well, if you're in Canada, you do. If you're in Germany, you, you do. Were, you do. Yeah, you want it not to be. You, you know, in fact, in fact, if you're if you're a corporate client, I think of Google if you're a corporate client, services, you, care you can say where you want it stored, right? Yes, and there are actually technologies that'll. Ca that'll cache data in certain you you can run something that'll say store this only in this amazon data center for example i guess my f oh. my argument is that google is using an artifact of its technological solution to try to defend the privacy of its users i i applaud their desire to protect the privacy of their users but i don't feel like this is a legit that strong of an argument. Because okay. And that's, that's, I mean, Google lawyers, bad legal argument. Okay. In any event, they're going to, obviously they're going to appeal. And, and, and the reason they're going to appeal is because the higher court, the se second circuit court did say that Microsoft could not be forced to turn over emails stored in Dublin. Mm -hmm. I think we get, I think, hmm. I mean, it's, it's thorny. I would, I'll have to listen on Friday. I'm sure. Denise Howell will discuss it on This Week in Law with some actual lawyers. Ooh. <laughs> what a thought. Um, you know, the ACLU, U.S. Chamber of Commerce, lots of technology media companies agree that it shouldn't, you know, that, you know, that it, 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 you shouldn't have to hand over data stored on servers outside the United States. Um, on the other hand, um, do you think their argument is weak? Yeah, I don't know. You know, uh, there were four dissenting judges on the district court, so it wasn't a wasn't a unanimous decision by any case. In fact, the dissent called on the Supreme Court or Congress to resolve this, saying the decision hurt law enforcement and raised national security concerns. So they said the Supreme Court should weigh in on this. It, this goes back to the Stored Communications Act of 1986. And one of the things that did get fixed by Congress just a few days ago was this crazy notion that if you didn't, if email was stored on a server for more than six months, 180 days, then you didn't, you lost all privacy rights to it, that it was considered abandoned at that point, and that no warrant will be required for law enforcement to access that. And that's been the, the law. Uh, now Congress has passed an act saying, no, 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 that's still your private property. Because, frankly, usage is, you know, the law is cut up with usage. People leave their email on servers forever, and it's still considered, you know, theirs. It's not abandoned. Well, no, that was the law. There was a period. It was until just last yeah. week. Yeah. Actually, it may yeah. still be the law. I, I guess it... Uh, did, it has to be printed in the Federal Register. President Trump has to sign it, and no one knows it'll happen then. 
<laughs> you know, they should. Can we make it just so that he just has to email, tweet it? Email? Is it is it Clinton's email? Is it Hillary's email? If he just oh, tweets well, it, it, it should be law. Just tweet it, and it'll be law. Uh, right? That's well. That's what he thinks. That's As exactly we were, what he thinks. We were so close. I we know. So close. I know. I know. I had to get in this shot. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Google interns work saves one and a half gigabytes a day. It's the famous, soon to be famous, Brotley <laughs> compression algorithm. Oh, uh, wait, was this on Silicon Valley? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. What is this? What is the score? What is it? What do they call that? The Ryman score? What is the score that they talk about there? Uh, Anna Maria uh, Cortilea, who was an intern, is now uh, from Romania, now a full-time software engineer. Uh, when she was at Google, as an intern, she perfected the Brotley compression and uh, installed it at the Google Play Store to streamline app installs and updates. And because so many people download... From the Google Play Store, 65 billion downloads. It's estimated that this compression, which reduces the average update size 65%, has saved a massive amount of data. An intern did it. Isn't that great? They used to use GZIP, but Brotley is so much better. I think this is cool because it shows kind of, I don't want to say it wasn't, I was going to say low-hanging fruit for both algorithms and software efficiencies, but it may not be low hanging fruit. It probably was really hard, but it's very cool to me that in a digital world, you can actually do these sort of tweaks uh, yeah. and have a really big impact very quickly. So that's one of the reasons I feel kind of optimistic about things in this area. Well, it also tells you something about Google scale, right? Yes, <laughs> a, little, that too. a little tiny improvement at Google scale. Saves. Yeah. It's estimated. Get this. Yeah, that's really true. One and a, this should be your number. I'm sorry if I stole it. One and a half petabytes a day. A day. One and a half petabytes of data transfer from the Google Play Store every day. A petabyte is a, a, a million gigabytes. <laughs> or so that gives you an idea one and a half million gigabytes of data every day and uh i i think that, that an intern could do that is so awesome yes we've talked about broadly on uh, security now um it's an interesting compression algorithm i don't know it's been around f for a year or so um it replaced zopfly <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, but it's uh, so you typically if you're using uh, compression, you know, using zip uh, on uh, Linux, so you'll use bzip uh, or gzip. Um, but this is much better and faster. 20 to 26 higher compression percent higher compression ratio over Zopfly. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so that's a, I, I like that story. You're right, because it shows it shows how. Uh, one person can make such a huge difference. An intern from Romania. Hey, they've got a lot of smart people in Romania. Oh yeah, oh yeah. She's a um, uh, she's a graduate uh, of the Faculty of Mathematics and Informatics at Babes Bolyai University. I'm sure that's mispr mispronouncing that. Babesh, Babesh Bolyai. Yeah, this is not a language that I I'm good Romanian. At. Babes Bolyai University. Babesh. Probably Babesh. That's what that little thing underneath there. What's that? Is that a sedil? No. What is that called? What do you call? Uh, in fact. That thingy. <laughs> this thingy is made up. It looks like. It doesn't look like it's in the font. They just drew it on there. I don't know. We need a Romanian. Oh, someone's asking about the square kilo kilometer array. What's that? That's a giant telescope that they're building in Africa in um, or maybe Australia and South Africa. Sorry. Um, it's going to create so much data. I think actually learning how to deal with the that amount of data is going to lead us to all kinds of new science. I wrote about it like years ago. Wow. It's very cool. Five kilometer diameter. Yes. Uh, it's huge. Ska. Um, 
And of course, the, you know, I mean, even even like the Arecibo telescope produces huge amounts of data. Uh, this one will be out, out amazing. Phase one of SCA was 650 million euros. Phase two's cost is not even established. Nice. It's a radio. It's a radio telescope, right? Yes. Yeah. That's probably important to say to people. What is that? <laughs> well, we're just you know we're listening for uh, the Howard Stern show. We've built giant dishes <laughs> so we can all listen to Howard Stern. We talked about this last week, and I don't know uh, if we really kind of explained it properly. So I'm going to try to do a better job this time. This is uh, Google Brain. Remember, they trained a pair of neural networks to zoom, enhance, zoom, enhance. Um, and I, we showed this, but I don't think I described this properly, this graphic. And now I'm not sure. I thought I understood it this morning, but maybe the coffee wore off. Uh, anybody want to try? This is the, oh, this is the pixel. This is... Uh, what, so what? at left... This is what the computer was given. An 8x8, very blurry picture, right? At right, what they call ground truth is the actual photo, okay? In the middle is what the computer, using AI, generated from the 8x8 input. Look how close it got. First and one, not so much. Next two, better. Yeah, they got the lips a little wrong. But it doesn't have that data. I mean, this is all it has is the 8x8. Eight eight. So we are, you know, that whole thing that you see all the time in, uh, you know, like 24. Oh, look at this blurry picture. Let's zoom in on it and see if we can see who that person is, which always annoyed me. Magic software. That's what we used to call it. Yeah, magic go, go software. magic software. It's not so uh, magic anymore. That's kind of amazing. Um, unfortunately, according to Google, this was a one-off research exploration. And they have no current plans to use it. Yeah, right. <laughs> we just invented this amazing thing, but we're not going to use it. I promise. All right. Enough of that. Ooh. We're going to take a break. A word from LegalZoom. The holiday hangover is over. New Year's dust has settled. Now you can actually do something. Forget those New Year resolutions. You can actually been doing some things you've been putting off for too long. For instance, you want to launch the business of your dreams? Take control of your family's future with an estate plan? Legal questions should never stand in your way. Legal Zoom is an awesome solution that helps you with the legal world. I mean, you saw even earlier in the show struggling with, well, what, uh, what does this mean? I'm not a lawyer. That's why LegalZoom was created over 15 years ago to give you the tools and know how to wrap up your legal needs with confidence and without paying for a pricey white shoe $350 lawyer. You can get legal advice, of course, from LegalZoom, from actual lawyers at flat rates through LegalZoom's network of attorneys licensed in 48 states. They'll help you with a right estate plan or answer any question you have about starting and running your business and without billing by the hour. Because LegalZoom is not a law firm. They just give you the tools you need to get things done. It's how we set up Twits LLC some years ago, our trademarks. It really works, and it's inexpensive. And for your family planning, Lisa did her will with the LegalZoom, got this great kit and everything they needed, she, all the forms she needed. And when you need a, a legal beagle to ask some questions, you can do it at a, a flat rate. Don't put it off any longer. Hurry to LegalZoom.com now. Start getting your life in order today. And, of course, special savings when you enter the promo code TWIG at checkout. LegalZoom.com. Don't let the, the red tape get in the way of you living out your dreams. LegalZoom can cut right through it. LegalZoom.com. Offer code TWIG. So uh, did, you have, was, did you watch the Super Bowl, A? Anybody? Yes. Yes. Did you, was your Google Home nearby? No. So uh, let's do it right now. Would everybody um, get your Google Home? Turn on your Google Home. Why don't you do this too, okay, Jeff? Okay, Google. No, no, no. You don't have to do anything. Just put it next to the speaker. Okay. Well, the speaker. I'm going to play this ad. Oh, well, hold on. I don't have a speaker. I have. No, no. Just oh, put yeah, your home next it. to the. 
Oh, your headphones or something. Yeah. I already did this earlier today. Yes, it does it. Does it do it? Oh, yeah. So the lady's yeah. getting home. Okay, Google. Turn on the hall lights. Did your hall lights come on, Jeff? Okay, uh, no. Turn off the music. <laughs> did your music go up, Jeff? Uh, no, it had no music. <laughs> It just the little lady light went around and around and around. So what's interesting is Amazon has somehow, and I would like to get this technology, modified their commercials so they don't wake up the echo. I thought they said they were working on it, but they hadn't done it. Because I asked them that last Super Bowl if they had done some technology and... They ate, they were Amazon, so they didn't actually answer the My question. Echo has not woken up to the TV in a while. But the Google does have a better speaker, like, or sorry, better microphones ah. than the Echo. So UUL in the chat room says, my Google Home went nuts during the Super Bowl. Uh, Gadget Nut in the chat room is saying, Amazon underlines underlies the audio of their commercials with a five kilohertz tone. That you, I guess, is inaudible, but that the Google, uh, the Amazon Echo knows enough to, oh, oh, this isn't real. Yeah. I was like, what? No. So uh, wouldn't that be audible, uh, five kilohertz tone? No? It's got to be within the range of TV speakers. Obviously, it has to be able to reproduce that. Here, let me, um, what was it? Five, what was the tone? Five kilohertz? Kil five kilohertz. All right, kilohertz. listen, this is a... That's a five. Oh! <laughs> what? Do you hear something? <laughs> I don't hear. I do. do. you hear anything? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. I'm just kidding. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> All right. Wait, wait. All right. Let's try this. Okay, everybody, put your echo near the uh, speaker here. Oh, echo. Okay. Well. okay. Alexa, wired, order me some roses. Amazon. Did that work? No, you made some noise. Don't make any noise. Shh. Okay, ready? Alexa, send Leo a hundred dollars. I think Soupy Sales got in trouble for that. <laughs> yeah, there's no FCC in podcasts yet. So um, I know that hurts some people because they have hearing. Yeah. Did that really hurt you? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that, Stacy. I apologize. So they 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 actually talked to Wired about this, and in that story, both. Google and Amazon are working on this, but oh. neither of them have it. Oh, that was a recent article? Yeah, that was like Monday. Okay, so Dr. Mom says hers woke up. UUI says, I'm uh, not sure what you meant by that question. Uh, Lawn Dog says his Echo Dot did wake up, but he didn't understand what she said. Uh, I think that uh, now, and somebody's saying again in the chat room, what they're doing is they're clipping the A word a little bit off. Oh, that could be oh, good. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. And uh, Guy Smiley says he's getting an order of four dozen red roses. Congratulations, Guy. <laughs> interesting. And uh, Leo, I'm like, oh, I'm my sorry, ears I heard your ears. Ringing. Really? <laughs> Do you listen really loud? It wasn't that loud, was it? No, it's just piercing. I don't. It know. hurt. It's painful. It was like uh, that's because you're like that's because you were born after 1977. Those of yeah. us yeah. born before 1977 don't even. We know got what back happened. at you, didn't, didn't you? We got back at her, didn't we, Leo? <laughs> I'm so mean. Like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know it would be that painful. Earlier, you said we were old, Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> How old are we, Stacy? All right. Can so you I hear have this? The punching button. You can have the the five five kilohertz button. <laughs> you hear this? <laughs> Actually, did you see the guy who's made a dash button? Okay, this is a little political, but it's still this is this is great. It's this still a great, a great story. So, yeah. and it actually is kind of a neat, uh, uh, geeky uh, story. Uh, you know, the uh, the uh, Amazon dash button allows you to uh, uh, push it and automatically order stuff. And this guy says, "You know what? I'd like, I'd like a dash button that I can push." that will donate to the ACLU every time I get mad at the TV. <laughs> so Nathan Pryor is a 41-year-old uh, designer, programmer, tinkerer, crafter, maker, and take apart her. And he, he likes to make stuff. He made a, a Tetris jack-o'-lantern. So he's created an ACLU dash button. <laughs> it's the greatest. Uh, it actually turned out to be a little bit uh, tricky. Amazon does give you kind of an interface to the button. Did you talk about this on your show today, Stacy? 
This is um, I-, I did IoT. not do the IoT dash button, but it is a good story. It's a good IoT button. Uh, and it turns out there isn't really an API for donations. So charities, you might want to think about that going forward. Have an API for donating, right? Then then people can write this. So he uh, wrote a script in Python using Amazon's AWS Lambda service, which is a very cool service. Uh, also works with the Echo uh, voice services, Amazon voice services. When it's triggered, his Python script opens the donation page, fills in the fields with his name, address, and credit card info, then presses the submit button. And then if it's successful, sends him a text message to let him know. He was so worried, though, about bugs that he used a prepaid gift card just so there wouldn't be an infinite loop of donations, which was probably smart. And he got the uh, acknowledgement from the ACLU. He uh, he was able to, uh, he said the, the real hard thing was getting the IoT button uh, registered and linked up to the script, but he was able to do that. So now he has a button on his computer. Whenever he sees something he doesn't like, <laughs> he just presses the dash button and sends 10 bucks to the ACLU. I think that is brilliant. It is. It is. I think that is just a really, that's an interesting use of the dash button, isn't it? And then you know what you can do? Mean, what's what? that? You can do an if this, then that. And then anytime you press it, you could actually send an email to Donald Trump or Mike Pence saying, Oh, might as well. You just I, made I just me. did this. Just so you know, that tweet. Exactly. And folks, uh, we'll be fair. You could donate to Breitbart too. Why not? Yeah. Or, you know, you could do Twilio. Can you do Twilio? Make phone calls. And, that? and make a phone call. Tell your senator. <laughs> We're gonna. You have. just pissed me off. <laughs> well, the, the other favorite Hi. thing I have is all kinds of people are, are making Teen Vogue subscriptions for their senators. Yeah, because Teen Vogue's been very political. It's, it's been, been amazing. It's been amazing. So we have a friend. We have had him on the new screensavers uh, who runs a company called the Jolly Roger Telephone Company. You may remember this. He he created robots that uh, if you get a call from a telemarketer, you could transfer the call over to their robot and it will tie them up for hours. Oh, yes. Hours. Here, you want to hear one? Just after months of asking for help, somebody finally teaches Sally how to record Hello? her favorite TV shows. So this is one of the Hello. calls. Hello. Hi, my name is Stephanie. I'm a customer service manager for Vintage Home Service. Hello. I'm just following up. Yes. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Hi. Yeah. My name is Stephanie. I'm a the customer female, service manager. The, the loud voice services. is the robot. I'm yeah, uh -huh. following up on a request for information that was made about a walk-in bathtub, mm -hmm. the Vantage Therapeutic walk-in bathtub. Yeah, um, like, okay, can so, like, can you get to the point? <laughs> so mean. Well, and I feel yeah, bad for the telemarketer because it's just, yeah. it's not, that's a poor, a nice job. lady who's just trying to do her job. However... There are some telemarketers I would very much like to punish. The people who call you say, hello, I'm calling from Windows, and your machine has a virus on it, and I can help you remove it. You know those guys? It's become yeah. a plague. So the Jolly Roger phone company is creating an outbound bot. When you get the pop-up on your screen, you just send the number to the Jolly Roger phone company, and he's going to have hundreds of his bots Call that number and harass them. <laughs> I'm sure it's illegal, but I love the idea. Uh, we're going to actually interview him on the new screensavers uh, on uh, Saturday. And maybe we'll even try it out. Mm -mm. Don't call me. Mm -mm. It's probably illegal, but maybe not. <laughs> not under this FCC. Not, nothing's yeah. illegal now, baby. Yeah, your, your FCC buddy is doing all kinds of things, fella. What's new, by the way? Hey, did I get it wrong? Because I was talking about Lifeline last week, and I had seen the story that nine companies were, were knocked off of that. But then I got a, a, a text message uh, from one of our uh, good friends, uh, uh, Allison from Nosillacast, who said, no, there are still 891 companies still doing it. Is that the case, or is Lifeline? There are a lot of Lifeline companies. Okay, and so those, Lifeline those Broadband were... is not dead. Um, those guys were kicked off mostly for a procedural issue. Yeah. Um, so, so I want to correct myself. So that so Lifeline Broadband is not dead. Um, or is it? Is it all of the 
Is it all of the Lifeline broadband people? Because there's Lifeline and then there's Lifeline broadband, isn't there? There's Lifeline, which is phone service. And last year, the FCC extended it to include to broadband. broadband. So the question is, were those nine the only ones providing broadband through Lifeline? Yeah. And here's where we're going to find out. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. Um, I, he defends it saying there 14 was... Project, 14 projects participated in the broadband pilot program. But he, in his Medium post to JitPi, said, first, our action only impacted nine of the over 900 providers participating in the Lifeline program. Maybe he's misrepresenting right, so that as the Lifeline telephone program has 900 providers. The Lifeline broadband program had 14 okay. originally. Okay. How many of those are still there? So in that know. case, <laughs> well, wait, that's wait, a very is, misleading a medium post from Ajit Pai. Oh, well, yeah. Because he's saying 900 providers participate in the Lifeline program. But we're not upset about that. We're upset about the Lifeline broadband program. Well, and this, I'm still trying to find out the actual number of folks in the Lifeline broadband program. If you'd asked right. me ahead of time, I could I'm have sorry. You. We need a reporter. We need somebody like Stacy Higginbotham here. <laughs> anyway, if you want to read more, and, and you know, maybe this is a hyperbolic headline, but it does sound like the, the, the program to provide. I do like it, frankly, that he is posting a response on Medium. Right. Uh, that's at least yeah. reaching out and, and participating and saying something. Uh, I would hope that this would be fact-checked. Uh, uh, by whom? By Stacy Higginbotham. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I don't know if you pay me enough to fact-check. Do you have? Pie. Yeah, I know, really. Um, but, but what I'd like, uh, I'll, all right, I'll tell you what, I'll go home and I'll fact-check it. I'll do some research. And, oh, and, no, I'm, I'm looking for it right now. And, and you I'll could, just email we can the post this as a comment. Uh, in this medium post, which is one of the advantages of medium posts, is you can annotate them. So I, I do, but I, I do want to say I, I may have misstated that, and so we're gonna, we're gonna figure that one out. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm digging through the lifeline modernization. My sense was, FAQs. yeah, this is the problem. It's kind of obfuscated. My sense was that. People are not going to get Lifeline broadband service. They might get Lifeline phone service, but the Lifeline broadband program is gone. But I may be wrong, and we'll check. YouTube mobile live streaming is here, starting with channels above 10,000 subscribers. I've, I've had live streaming on YouTube for a while. Samsung offered it on some of its phones and with its, with its 360 camera. Uh, but if you didn't have one of those uh, or you weren't a verified user who was allowed to do this uh, or whatever it was that you had to have. Now you can now anybody with more than ten thousand subscribers on YouTube can do it, and eventually, YouTube says everybody who has YouTube will be uh, and has the ability to stream live from a phone will be able to do that. I, I'm surprised that frankly it's taking them so long because Facebook's competition Facebook's of Facebook Live has been huge. out there for yeah. what eight months now. Yeah, um, YouTube has much more experience in video. It's got to be expensive. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot well, that's of what they said about YouTube originally. Well, YouTube's so. expensive, isn't it? Yeah. YouTube was let's, is. Let's expensive. talk about Facebook. I mean, what's what's the latest? So, so this was a number, but I'm not going to steal it for myself, which is fine. What's the number now on um, uh, Senator Warren's? So when she got kicked off the Senate floor yesterday, or, or told for, to sit down, for, she was told you you may not read this letter from 1986 oh. by Coretta Scott King it was. Sent to the Senate uh, during uh, Jeff Sessions' uh, 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 confirmation hearing for being a federal judge, Coretta Scott King saying that Sessions had um, uh, used, uh, you know, tried to suppress voting by black voters. Um, Elizabeth Warren tried to read it last night on the Senate floor and was stopped procedurally by Mitch McConnell who said it was impugning a fellow senator. That's a, a, a rule in the Senate. You can't impugn other senators. However, another senator then read the cover letter. Many senators have since. How, oh, more than one. Oh, lots of men have, and they weren't stopped. Oh, that's bizarre. Uh, so you she know the Republicans don't like uppity women. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it may be they so were, she, may they, they kind of probably knew that Elizabeth Warren was going to do it and had procedurally had prepared for it. Maybe they weren't prepared for 
50 other guys to do it. I don't know. Well, the, ar the argument the argument on Morning Joe this morning, why do I watch that? But the argument uh, Steve Schmidt made, which which is that he, McConnell wanted to do exactly that because that, 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 that Trump wants Elizabeth Warren to be his opponent in 2020. And so they're setting her up to be the leader of oh, the wow. resistance because they think they can beat her. How cynical is that? I just put on the on the rundown chat, I put it, there was a great thread that then explained, was it Rule 19? Rule 18? Yes, 17? about imp Rule impugn impugning a fellow senator. So so it explains the, um, uh, it, like like the Electoral College itself, it has racist roots going back to abolition. Uh, maybe you put it up later and read it later, but it's kind of fascinating. With John Quincy Adams was involved, and they basically tried to shut up the ab abolitionists. Uh, hmm. And that's what led to Rule 19, the show more. If you saw the Spielberg movie about Lincoln, you saw how vicious the the, the debate was over uh, the, uh, uh, what was the amendment? I can't remember. Uh, but they were really calling each other names, so I can see why they Oh, might. yeah. <laughs> it was, that was wonderful, by the way. That's a great movie to watch if you ever want to enjoy. enjoy so anyway... Uh, Elizabeth Warren's video now has more than 9 million views wow. on Facebook Live. And it is a huge meme on Twitter. She persisted. Persist. Persist. Yeah. Kamala Harris, our senator from California, says, by silencing Elizabeth Warren, the GOP gave women around the world a rallying cry. She persisted. <laughs> she was, this is what uh, McConnell said, Never. she was warned. She was warned, yeah. and now she persisted. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, she persisted. She T-shirts sure have been made already. Well, um, yeah, God, it's just it gonna... works. With resist, persist. Resist and persist, and then of course the all the women who persisted, like uh, yeah, Susan B. Anthony today. and and uh, So Joiner Truth, and on and on and on. <laughs> all right, just another thing to wear when you go to that next march. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Facebook launches fake news filter in France. <laughs> Actually, that's because the French have an election coming up. They have an election coming up. So, yes, yes, Facebook and I think Google is working on this, too. So, yeah, they're, they're doing cooperative stuff there. Um, so that shows they can that. do Getting it. ahead of it. They can well, do it. it. Well, yeah, I mean, that shows they're they're doing what similar what they did here, and they're and they're trying to get ahead of it this time. Is it just my learn. Facebook feed, or has Facebook, to at least the way I see it, uh, has replaced to some degree Twitter as a news feed? Facebook no longer is pictures of doggies and my friends' new babies as much as it is uh, news. It's also learning about you. I, I, is I that because of me? Uh, yeah, I had an off-the-record meeting with a bunch of product people on Facebook a week ago. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Um, uh, but one thing they said that they, they, I, I think this is fine. One of the phrases they use is "news whales." Am I a and news whale? Yeah, yeah, you're a news whale, and if you're in, and, and some news whales will end up ninety-five percent of their feed will be it is uh, news. Easily. Some people will have zero news in their feed. Oh, interesting. So it's just me. <laughs> Is that oh, like casino still, whales? <laughs> no, but it's, you hope it's not like the fail, the news whale and the fail whale are cousins. Um, I get, you know, I still get a few things, uh, but a lot, of, a lot of political. I, I think it's also just the times and the politicization of our friends and right. people are talking about this stuff um, and they're making jokes. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I have my new uh, hip hop name, Easy D. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of here's Dan Lines with an Easy D joke. Uh, so it's just, it's just the topic, you know, of the moment across tons of conversations. So I, I don't think it's moment. just the personalization. I think it's what people are talking about. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, boy, if nothing else, we're seeing how important social media has become to the body politic, to the, to the national oh, yeah. discussion. Is it a good thing? I think it's a good thing. All in all, but I think that the, the the issue we have now is still the civility problem. I mean, I, I, I well, the I civility problem so. and the echo chamber slash filter bubble problem, right? Because yeah, basically, I, I, people I, I, unfollow people who don't agree with them. So here's let me try this idea out on you. So what what I think is what the internet enabled first was speaking. What it didn't enable was listening. Yeah. And everybody's good at speaking. We can all speak now. Everybody can yell up and speak, and, and there's no conversational requirement, really. 
right? Yeah. Uh, you can go on and We're be mean shouting and, at and that's each the other. architecture. Uh, that's the architecture of the of the thing. Yeah. And, yeah. and 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 how we find better conversational mechanisms. I mean, Zuckerberg when he wrote his um, 13th birthday bar mitzvah post about about Facebook. Um, I'm assuming it's male. But, um, uh, you know, talked about the goals and talked about, and I think I think Facebook has a lot more opportunities. It's barely begun to connect us in meaningful ways and introduce us to strangers and encourage us to have conversations that are civilized. And I think there's a lot a lot more it can do uh, that it's it's still yet young. But the problem is that we don't listen well as a society. We shout well because that's the opportunity we have now. But then you're not heard, and that's frustrating. And so you shout louder. Yeah. I think that's a function of the media, and I think it's mm -hmm. probably a function of the media being dominated more, more by um, – Punditry. A certain – yeah, punditry, a certain personality. I mean, if I think about, like, why – I was thinking about this in relation to Donald Trump and the idea that the Defense Department might take – space in the Trump Tower in comparing that in my head to what happened when Hillary and Bill were like leasing out the Lincoln bedroom. And <laughs> when I don't, don't kill me, Jeff, I, I, I'm just thinking about what drives the aggravation behind all of these and why one might be okay yeah. to the other, but not the other is, is the people yelling about it on cable TV, to be honest. I, th I think yeah, yeah, so. No, I, I, I agree. I listened to a really great interview. Uh, Alec Baldwin's podcast, Here's the Thing, is so good. And a couple of months ago, he interviewed, um, oh, Bob, is it Bob Garfield? Is that mm -hmm. his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, the media critic. He's media critic. And he said- He's very funny. He's very good. And uh, he says, I stay away from all cable news shows because they're not journalism, they're punditry. He says there's not that many news stories to fill a 24-hour news cycle. So what yes. it mostly is, and he's abs and when he, once he said it, I thought, oh, he's right. And what happens is you watch the cable news network that follows your that feeds your vision of the world, and mm -hmm. and you and it becomes a nonstop stream of kind of co confirmational bias that just solidifies you in your thoughts. And uh, I, I, he said, I, I think it would be good for all of us to turn off the cable news networks, you know, read newspapers of record maybe, but not, you know, where there's actual news. But isn't Facebook, it's kind of the same thing now. It's just this confirmation it bias. So Facebook is with your friends. I would say, though, the problem is, so Rachel Maddow, yes, yeah, she has a very definite political bent, but Earlier on, especially, she did a lot of things trying to explain how yeah. stuff worked to yeah. people. Yeah. And I think yeah. people just don't want to, you don't want to sit and watch that on the television when you're tired from working a day's work because it's hard to think. I it's beg hard. to differ. I, and I'm trying to break this. I got addicted and I had these channels on 24 7 all the time for the last three or four weeks. And I realized I was getting, you know, a, a drip, an intravenous drip. Uh, and I, I just have to cut it off. Not because I don't want, I'm not engaged and I don't want to engage. I do want to engage, but I don't think it's helpful. Yeah, I, I went off Twitter this weekend and I felt much better on yeah. Sunday evening. Welcome to um, the club. Just because. Yep. <laughs> no. well, so I, 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 yeah, I, I had Although, to kind of be, oh, I watched Twitter nonstop during the Super Bowl. That was fun. Oh yeah, see, I it was fun except frustrating because I wanted the other guys to win. Um, oh, sorry, Jeff. It's okay. So I I put up I, I so so this happened to me. So I put up a tweet. I was having fun, I thought, and I learned that Pat's fans and Trump's fans have a high Venn diagram overlap. Um, it's because Tom Brady. I, Exactly. So I put up a post that said, uh, uh, you know, trying to be humorous doesn't work terribly well in those circumstances. So I put up a post on Twitter that said, uh, tonight, all right thinking, decent, civilized, <laughs> intelligent, democratic Americans oh, are oh, from Atlanta. <laughs> and then I put up a post at the loss and I said, God hates us. <laughs> I saw God hates us. I didn't see the previous one. <laughs> yes. And I so, was very puzzled. <laughs> Somebody, somebody put that together in a GIF for the purposes of having lots of frog people come after me. 
Uh, and it got that that gift got retweeted by America's best known Nazi. Oh, you're kidding! Spencer retweeted so, got Richard. Yeah. So so what it meant was I'm probably going to start it again. I hope that there's no Venn diagram overlap with uh, tw Twig fans. Please, please don't tweet this, folks. Um, but what happened was my Twitter feed was useless for 36 hours. Useless. Because it was nothing yeah. but you got to be very careful. Tears and yeah. and all yeah, this you stuff. Don't, right? You don't want to uh, stimulate that conversation. Yeah, when that happens, you just got to log off and grab yeah. your little AFib card. Yeah. So I, I, <laughs> I, I, I yeah. yeah. There's a new there's a new gesture in town. <laughs> so so I went uh, yes I went off Twitter as a result I was forced off Twitter for 36 hours. Uh, and yeah, in a way, Stacey, you're right. I kind of felt better, but why did I go back? I, don't I know. feel better when I leave social media, and uh, I'm gonna at lump social media. And cable news, and I'm gonna put them together and turn them yeah. off. And life so, is so. So read better. the thing. Twitter Twitter now says they're gonna try to do some things to make this better. I think it's it's. I saw that announcement. Quixotic. It it's comes back the, though to hiding from you the bad. The, stuff. It's, the, I'm sorry. The I'm sorry. The Carson, crap. The, the, the sewage, crap that's sewage. going on around you. Yeah, it's still and, going and, uh, on. That doesn't work. No. Somebody. So I, I took somebody did something awful. Uh, I won't say what it is. Um, and so I sent it, to, I thought, well, what the hell? I sent it to Twitter and they responded quickly saying, screw you, Jeff. Really? Like, what do you have to do? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What do you have to Wait. do to violate Twitter's rules? Huh? Well, I, I guess I should read the rules because lately Twitter has, uh, does seem to be both more helpful and less helpful. Yeah, <laughs> I think it yeah. depends who you get. <laughs> How many people do you think they have? I mean, there must be thousands working in the abuse department now. Uh -huh. Facebook says, we can't monitor all posts for racist language. We don't have the means. This is in a German court case. Um, is this even credible? Do, I mean, can't don't they see every post? How hard would it be to write a filter? Um, well, you don't know what's racist and it changes all the time. I mean, there are certain things right. that, yes, you could screen for. But, you know, if you screen for the word Nazi, um, that might preclude historical right. documentation. Well, or somebody saying, you know, uh, yes, exactly. You know what I did, by the way, instead of watching cable news a couple of nights ago, I watched Downfall again, which is that great German <laughs> oh, language yes. story of Hitler. You watched it with the actual dialogue? With the actual dialogue instead of the meme dialogue. But, you know, there's a wonderful moment, in it, and I wish I had a way of clipping this and posting on Twitter, when Goebbels, Goebbels, uh, Hitler's propaganda minister, is confronted by a general who says, you've got to stop the Volkssturmer. These are the, the, the citizenry that Hitler mobilized in the last days of Berlin to defend Berlin. Children, women, old people, people who weren't in the army. And the, the general comes, you've got to stop these guys. They're just getting, they have no training, no weapons. They're being slaughtered in the streets. And this is the, what I want to clip, is Goebbels saying, well, I have no pity uh, for the people, we have a mandate. They knew what they were voting for when they voted us in. And I thought, wow. that's a kind of a nice quote. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm listening to Volker Ulrich's uh, biography of Hitler right now. Oh, good stuff. Um, there are some it is good. interesting historical. It, yeah, there, there, there are. And what it shows you that, that resistance matters, that when yeah. you give up on the resistance, uh, uh, it's an issue. But it also... Shows it was fascinating. I didn't quite realize this. I mean, the the the, the language in, in in after Weimar was quite clear. Democracy is bad. We're going to get rid of democracy. Yeah. The world wants a dictator. And that was what they said. Get rid of the 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 press as well. The Munich yes. Post yeah, and the other yeah, yeah, newspapers yeah, the that were press, reporting yeah. on all of this. And yeah. they said, you know, and the very first thing Hitler does after the Bihar Putsch and goes to jail, but the very first thing they should do is shut down the Munich newspaper. Have you seen the Alt Potus Forty Five Twitter handle? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's brilliant. There's one one today right now. Just gonna day eighteen. Have a no dickwads allowed rule at the DOJ. <laughs> Told McConnell that he's a low life POS. Sent Bill to Nordstrom's for sensible heels. <laughs> I, and I've been trying not to read Twitter, Jeff. Do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> so here's uh, here's what birth. I'm gonna recommend you do. <laughs> this this will make you maybe feel better. Plus, it's a damn good movie or darn good uh, movie. I am. Um, found the eyes on the prize the pbs isn't documentary that a great from, movie for a, freaking awesome for a you long can stream time it. you couldn't watch it because the martin luther king uh, uh, uh right. estate said yes. well you can't 
broadcast that without paying us because of the I Have a Dream speech. I guess they've backed down on that because Eyes on the Prize is back and it is well worth watching. And while you're watching that, watch 13th on Netflix, which is the yep. history of the 13th Amendment, which I was trying to remember earlier. And uh, it is a damning, a damning but brilliant documentary on racism and the history of racism in America. You know what else I watched? A couple of Steve Bannon documentaries. That was fun. Oh, you watched them? I was very curious. This isn't really for this show. So after the show, I'll tell you what I learned. You want to hear? I got an update on the Lifeline data that I did some reporting Thank for you. you here. Yes. Would you Would you like to know the details? Please. So according to Mark Wigfield, a FCC spokesman, there are over 900 Lifeline providers and they are all allowed to offer broadband. Ah. We don't have a number of how many do at this point. Okay. The program is in a transitional stage right now. Eventually, all Lifeline providers will have to offer broadband in order to get the support. Okay. So I then I think Ajit Pai's uh, statement is accurate that that is to say that the nine they were shut down shuts down the broadband Lifeline project is not accurate. So I, so, I, I want to retract that and correct myself. So there you go. And the, they, if you, do you want the further information from them sure. on the details here? The distinguishing feature of the nine going back for further review, which is what happened, yep. is they were cleared by the FCC to be nationwide lifeline broadband providers. So they didn't get designated state by state. And the tribal lands people, they said, we want to have the states have challenged that portion of the uh, order, saying the states, not the FCC, can approve providers. Got it. So uh, now you know. Thank you. I appreciate your uh, your work. My email, my twenty second email to the spokesman at the FCC. Thank you. Oh, really? That's how you got oh. that? Oh, yeah. reporting, actual reporting. So impressive. We're not <laughs> worthy. No, we're not. We're old and not worthy. We're not worthy. I, I'm not a good pundit. I can only report. <laughs> <laughs> That's something we've needed on this network for a hell of a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, there you facts? go. Thank you. Facts. Facts. That's that's my weakness. No, and I admire that uh, greatly. I really do. Uh, Twitter's head of diversity is leaving, <laughs> but that's another matter. Who's who's? I, I think the, the, the chef in the kitchen is leaving, too. I think <laughs> everyone's leaving Twitter. Uh, the chief HR officer has already left. This according to uh, TechCrunch. Uh, mm -hmm. the VP of diversity and inclusion. I think it's great that they had a VP of diversity and inclusion, uh, but uh, he's 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 left for personal reasons. She's left. Oh no, Renee Atwood, the human resources officer, has left for personal reasons. We don't know why Jeffrey Simonoff, the uh, diversity guy, he came from Apple, where he was director of worldwide inclusion and diversity. <sighs> Uh, Twitter Twitter yay. stocks up today. You know, I've been noticing it going up even when the stock market's been going down. It's been ratcheting up. And I don't I don't hear any more. It sales has to be a sales like thing. It has to be the market knows about some sort of, or maybe uh, Jim Cramer pushed a button. Yeah, buy Twitter. But it's been going up pretty steadily over the last week. Not sure why. Did you see yeah, Amazon has hired this? Is this one of your numbers? One hundred and ten thousand people last year. I know it's amazing. Most of them are poorly paid. Uh, they hired 110,000 people, a third of their workforce in one year. What I wonder is how many of those are warehouse. Uh, they've got to almost all be uh, delivery. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'd love to know what the what the kind of employment percentages is are of of Amazon in terms of you know engineering, science, marketing versus. Warehouse well, they ain't working at the uh, new Amazon ghost store. Apparently, the ghost store should be called a ghost store because you only need as few as three employees and a max of 10. To st This is the store where you just go in, pick up what you want, and walk out. So did you see Bezos mocked a report that he was going into the grocery business big time saying uh, on, on, on Bezos' Twitter feed, he mocked it. Yeah, there it is. Why would, why would he want to do robot-run supermarkets? Well, because you did one, Jeff. Oh, well, now he knows. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> are, are all of those employees, were they all full-time or were some contract? Oh, probably. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. Oh, I'm sure a lot were contract. Uh, let's see. You ask the I tough questions. So <laughs> At any given location, a max of 10 human employees. 
Wait a minute. This is the New York Post. I'm not sure I'd trust this. Uh, they plan to use six people per shift on average, with Amazon relying on robotic automation and software to most of the heavy lifting. But that kind of makes sense because that's the whole point of it, right? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. What else do we have? How Google fought back against a crippling IoT-powered botnet and won. Stacy, Stacy, tell us, are we safe? This is actually the Krebs on security story. Poor, yes. I, I feel so bad for Brian Krebs, who was a great security reporter for years at the Washington Post. Then he went out on his own, uh, does a great blog. He was uh, doing excellent reporting on um, the various, uh, which one was it? It was um, on, on uh, I can't remember. He, he kind of blew the lid off of one of the... Um, one of the hacking groups. As a result, his site was uh, taken down uh, by a massive sin flood, 130 million packets a second. And uh, then up to uh, an even stronger attack using the Mirai open source botnet. That was the one that brought down the DNS, you know, Dyn DNS uh, servers. This is a botnet that takes advantage of hacked uh, routers and Internet of Things cameras, Internet-enabled cameras. At one point, 140 gigabit per second attack. Holy cow. Yeah. Uh, so Google jumped in and uh, and used, they have a, a service called Project, Project Shield. Project Shield? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Designed to protect news, uh, journalists, and human rights uh, uh, organizers from digital attacks. It's basically DDoS protection. But it's free to those people, which is awesome. And it was uh, Krebs was able to use it to mitigate the DDoS attacks because Google has more bandwidth than the bad guys. A lot. Right. Well, so how does he that was work? on does Akamai. He was on oh. Akamai, and they brought it down. Akamai pushed him off, saying, "You can't. We can't. You're killing our network." <laughs> to be fair, Krebs Akamai was hosting him for free. And so, and he was, I mean, this was actually economically not viable right. for Akamai. So the way you you survive a DDoS attack, the reason these work is uh, because you can, uh, you can uh, forge your origination. So if, if, you know, if I sit here, initially it worked because I could forge my origination. If I'm sitting here firing a million packets a minute at you, I, I have them all with random IP addresses. That was the raw sockets uh, technique. More recently... Because of these massive botnets, people don't even care. They don't bother because you take down one, you still have 100 million other Linksys routers aimed at you. And so the only way to mitigate in both cases is just to put a big pipe there because the way they work is they jam the pipe. They have a ter So Google's saying that they have a terabit of spare capacity. Right. Jesus. Which Just in case. You just have to have, you're being flooded. You just have to have a bigger pipe than the flood. There's no other way. Oh, there's no other way to okay. do it because you can't ignore. So, I mean, my information is a little out of date, but the, a sin flood. Uh, you know the way the web works is uh, when my open my browser and say go to yahoo.com, I send them a synchronized packet, which is basically a knock on the door saying I'd like to have a conversation. Yahoo sends an act back, and then we have a back and forth conversation, which mostly includes me downloading content from Yahoo servers. The way these DDoS attacks work, one way these DDoS attacks work is with a sin flood where they, they, don't, they knock, but they don't care if you respond. And no website can, not, can afford to not respond. That's how people get on the website. So every single one of these knocks, you have to, is, you know, sin packets, you have to respond to. So the website very quickly can be un overloaded. No website is designed to handle a million requests a second. Uh, but if you're behind a giant... Uh, uh, shield we use we use a similar service i won't say from home um, but if you're behind somebody with a lot of pipe you can you can handle it all those sin packets come into you what happens is the 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 ddos protection holds them it sees them holds them and then dribbles them out so you can respond to them so it can hold back the wall and what that generally means is that response from the site is slower but it's not dead mm -hmm. so and we now we're them. And you, Someone and in you the outlast chat. them. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead. 
Someone in the chat room said that Akamai was not hosting Brian Krebs. They were offering for free. They were offering DDoS, DDoS protection, protection for free. Right. So right. that is that is a yeah. point. <laughs> and one of the things that's gotten worse is uh, besides these botnets, which is a big one, using IoT devices that are not well secured. Uh, okay, the, let's stop calling them IoT devices. <laughs> I'm serious because cameras are, and routers in the case of Mirai, but it's anything that's on the net could be used. Well, so but yes, but 90% of what we think of when we think of IoT devices are things that are actually very small and not likely to be useful in these attacks because they don't have the capacity or the compute power. So your thermostat is going to be a really crappy element for a botnet attack because it's it doesn't have any bandwidth. It, it it's Right. It's limited. So I think that's an important thing to say I'm to not, people. Because I'm not convinced of that. Uh, hey. Because remember, they, 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 they make it up in volume. So if your thermostat could send one packet out every minute, it's okay if I've got 5 million of them. My thermostat is sending its one packet out every minute to Nest. So Nest filters it there. Because it's well designed. Well, okay, yes, but... Also, something like my light switch doesn't have the compute power yeah, inside probably. to run right. a bot. So the way it Mirai works is it infects the, the the router, which does have RAM and processor and so forth. It sits in RAM and and basically takes the route over. It says, you you got a new job now. Right. Uh, and obviously, that would be a lot harder to do with a thermostat or a, or a light or a switch. I, so. I, I'd hesitate to say it couldn't be done. I'm not saying it couldn't be done, but it's not, It's not, I guess, economically efficient from a capacity or effort standpoint. Um, well, not, the while, thing, not while there's things like right, routers not when there's and cameras lying around. Cameras and DVRs you're, lying around. You're gonna and those, go, things, yeah. those things have been out forever, right. like a decade right. or longer. So, okay. That, that was my... I know because you like, like the Internet of Things. And you don't. It's not just that I like it; it's that there are legitimate security woes about these devices, and right. we're not talking about those. We're talking about something that is far removed from what the problem is today. Right. Uh, so. But it does argue for all devices that are on the internet to have uh, be yes. updatable firmware, uh, passwords mm -hmm. that are not hardwired in to hard -coded. <laughs> things hard coded in. Things like that. And uh, these, yes. these routers were like that. And as a result, they were commandeered. And there's also another issue. I mean, some of these attacks are using an amplifica amplification. Uh, and those are really scary because somebody doesn't have to have a lot of bandwidth. Your Nest does not have to have a lot of bandwidth. It merely needs to send a ping to an appropriate server. Often it's, uh, I mean, of late it's been NNTP servers, the time servers. But there are presumably other servers out there. And, and create a flood so what you do is you ping the time server with a forged IP address, Brian Krebs IP address, and you say, send me everything you know. <laughs> and then the time server floods Brian's IP address with crap. So that's another kind of attack, an amplification attack that is also very widespread. And, and that argues for internet uh, software like the NNTP server software to be kept up to date. Uh, that, yes. that sad that's story of NNTP is it's one guy who's maintaining that, uh, you know, and not paid by anybody. And it's, and it's you know, it's he, he can only do so much to fix this stuff. I'm sure he's fixed that bug because that was a well-known amplification attack. All right, we should wrap this up. Um, any, I'll tell you what, I'll give each of you a choice of a one or two stories you'd like to make sure we get in. You first, Stacey. Oh. Any, anything I missed? Okay. This is, I um. You want to talk about two. Vizio? Oh, I could talk about Vizio. I'll bring that one up. You got two. I'll bring my. I'll bring that one up. Okay. One is, and I'm only bringing this up because you mentioned this device, so I thought it was worth adding to this. Plus, it's a cool feature. The Logitech uh, is it the Zero Touch? Uh, yes, I have dashboard it. mounting system. Yeah. So now it is connected to the Amazon Echo, <gasps> and. Yes, when you wave your hand in front of it, if it's set up and you've enabled the skill, you can actually ask the Echo anything you want in your car. So, no, Leo, I yes. gotta get it back out. Yes, Yay. go play with it. So, so it puts it puts an Echo in my car. Yes. So this little thing is a magnet. You put a little plate on the back of your phone, Android or iOS. Play and discover weekly playlist on Spotify. You can wave your hand at it. And, and there's always been a few things you could do, but now you could do anything that the Echo does. 
I believe so, yes. Nice. Because I, I have I bought Amazon Unlimited what Music. Would you like to say to Lisa? Oh, well then you, my friend, I'm on my way. the whole like joyous thing ahead of you. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Car ride ahead. It works pretty well. I, I don't keep it in there because both my cars have their own, you know, voice right. stuff. Yeah. But yeah, nothing but, as I good mean, as like Echo. The Tesla's, yeah, the Tesla. I'm constantly like, oh, if only I could ask she who shall not be named. Well, so. I do. I do like Tesla. You can dict. You can say because it has slacker. You can say I did that on the way in. Play medieval music, and it'll it it has it has radio stations. So you can say that. What? Yes. I like medieval I'm just, music. I, I'm I'm just like that was not what I was expecting, <laughs> and it's also very different than mine's like. Play Justin Bieber's greatest hit. Actually, you would like the girl. medieval music I got because it played a nice, you know, medieval concert. And then it played Drake. Yes. So I'm, you might I'm, like it. I, I might. You're right. I think um, it's because the, that song Drake said, I'm going to go all medieval on your ass. Okay, Google. Play medieval music. Oh, By the way. Here's a Google Play music station called Folk Metal. Folk Metal? <laughs> What is even, what even is folk metal? Oh, oh, that's awful. I gave my love a Jerry that had no stone. Uh. Okay, Google. Next. No, no. <laughs> no more no. folk metal. All right. Oh, that's like, uh, that's like, uh, <laughs> that's like drop kick, the drop kick movies. <laughs> Right? That's what that is. That's Patrick Norton's favorite music. Okay, okay stop it! Stop okay, Google, it! Stop. <laughs> okay, Jarvis, stop! <laughs> All right, your that other is an great. echo skill because I, I whined about this and then so I went, I had to go find something for me. This is called Sergeant Tabata, T A B A T A, in. Last week, I think it was that I was talking about high inter intensity interval training, and I needed a timer. Well, yeah. holy cow, this does it. This is a. It does a. Oh, you can do custom intervals. It's an interval oh, nice. timer. So I'm like, hey, she who should not be named, you know, start Sergeant Tabata, and then it's like, do you want it custom or do you want it every you know 20 seconds on, 10 seconds of rest? Oh, that's nice. So there you go. Does he go? Hang it, bottom, drop it, give me 20. So this is all of the Echoes fitness things, including the seven minute workout, drive me nuts because it's always the same voice and it's yeah. so chill. And sometimes when you're exercising, especially yeah. if you're going to be trying to go all out for 20 seconds, it's hard. You're kind of like, yeah, you, you need to be driven. I need a little more oomph. Yeah. My, so. uh, my trainer uh, is a, a former Marine. You would like him. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah. I, I like anybody who's like, go. Oh, man. All right, Jeff, your story. Um, so I just put this up there. I think it's kind of cool. So uh, Lufthansa held a, in honor of New York Fashion Week, held a fashion show flight. So on the flight, you had a, the, 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 it was a runway. <laughs> and see, this is one so, thing I actually don't like about modern flying. I, they, 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 I hate it. They do the announcement saying we have a lovely catalog full of wonderful things, and they go down the aisle on some airlines and try to sell you crap. This is just well, one more way to do that. Now you have models walking by you. What's oh, so yeah. wrong with that? I don't like that. At I just want to <laughs> keep my head down. I'm sorry, Jeff. Are there any hot male models? Because if there are not, maybe I don't know. There might be. I don't know. I forget whose there was whose line it was. They had a line they were doing. All right. Well, never mind. So much of my friends. Isn't it? Didn't Lufthansa just do a big collaboration for new uniforms, or was that somebody else uh, with like a high fashion designer? Hold on, they might have. They might have. I forget. Ivy Revel. All right, Jeff Jarvis, give us a number. A number. A number. Two thousand three. So last weekend, a uh, meetup held a three-day hackathon, but there was a meetup-a-thon where they decided to uh, enable a thousand um, resistance meetups. Sorry, it's political, but that's where it is. Uh, and in combination with the likes of ADL, Amnesty International, Planned Parenthood, Human Rights Campaign. And uh, they're using it to get people together, which nice. I found kind of interesting. Nice. Yeah. Stacy Higginbotham, you got something for us? 
Oh, those are my things. Oh, I'm sorry. I gave my things early. I saw. Oh, you already did oh, your I things. I see those are things. Oh, I yeah, I wasn't thinking. So what were sorry. your things? Oh. Just remind me. Sergeant Tabata, the new Echo Skill. Okay. And then um, the update on the good Logitech Zero. Oh, were, good. are those acceptable to you? They're yes. <laughs> I will give you a pass, young lady, this time. Okay, because I have a pen that erases. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is just for all the lovers out there. Netflix last, uh, two years ago for Christmas, did a very strange, a very Mer very Murray Christmas with Bill Murray. You remember that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, was, no. what? I know what you're going to say. They got one now for this one. No. This For Valentine's Day, it's a Michael Bolton Valentine's oh, Day special, but it's... Tongue in Cheek, it actually is available now on Netflix for streaming. If you're, it's put together by the folks who did, the, who are Lonely Island, right? So it's going to be funny. In fact, I'll, because guess who plays Kenny G? <laughs> Let me see if I can find the, uh, the trailer for Michael Bolton's. <laughs> I'm watching it tonight with my honey and her new sport bra. Uh, let's see. No, that's right. We're not doing that. <laughs> diamonds, Joe. Diamonds. diamonds. And her new diamond. You want to see the, uh, apparently there's a giant eagle involved. It's very tongue-in-cheek. This Valentine's Day, spend the evening with the world's greatest hey lover. There. I'm Michael Bolton. When a man loves a woman. I've been waiting for you. I believe in two things. One, ghosts. And two, that there's somebody out there for everyone. Can every day be Valentine's Day? <laughs> I think this looks oh, pretty God. funny. All of you out there love making. So if you're not making love already, you will be soon. <laughs> Fred Armisen's in it. Will Fort. Sarah Silverman. That's how I found out about Sarah tweeted this morning. Michael Sheen. Maya Rudolph. Adam Scott. Chris Parnell is one of my favorite fake doctors ever. What is that sound? And Andy Samberg as Kenny G. Let's do this. <laughs> Why do you care so much about this stupid holiday? I don't know. I think this is what's been missing in Valentine's Day all what these years. What the is going on? <laughs> this is the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Smith is a fool, and then Hale is a hero. Anyway, you get the idea. That's what I'll be doing tonight. I hope you'll be doing something equally lovely, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you for joining us for this week in Google. Stacey Higginbotham. From Stacy on IoT and the IoT Podcast at IoTPodcast.com. Akiga Stacy on the Twitter. Thank you, Stacy. Have a wonderful evening with your June oven. <laughs> Me in the June. Like it this. It feeds you. Like this. Uh, it's like, that's my Valentine's Day gift that, for Andrew right there. Yeah, right there, baby. And uh, thank you, uh, Jeff Jarvis. Oh, I forgot. I almost forgot. So I wore this t-shirt in honor. Uh, F8 uh, uh, registration is now open. Oh, is that an F8? T is that a Facebook it's F8? It's an F8 t-shirt, yes. Nice. Last year. It doesn't oh, clear nice at all. They're t-shirts, too. They, what, they, 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 they do good t-shirts. Yeah. Are you going? I hope so. Will you cover it for us? Sure. All right. I remember last year I had to sit on the floor. I know. That was awesome. Somewhere to get decent Wi-Fi. That was awesome. I didn't talk about the Vizios, but we did it yesterday on Security Now, so you can listen to Steve Gibson's take on it. The Vizio TV apparently... Vizio has settled with the FTC since 2014, been gathering information about everything you've been watching on TV. And selling and it. selling it. Although, uh, as I pointed out to Steve Gibson, I remember 15 years ago being offered that same data from TiVo. Uh, presumably everything that knows that, you know, what you're watching has, uh, has some value, and everything that knows it is probably selling it to somebody. The Vizio um, did something quite clever. It would because it's not it's not like a TiVo. It's not a tuner, unless you're you know. But most people don't. They so uh, it would look at it would do pattern matching to the pixels on the screen to figure out what you were watching. Yeah, which is actually really interesting it's technology. Clever. clever, isn't it? It's I mean oh, yeah. like a grace note for TV shows would be really like Comcast should really get up on that. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, they've uh, consent decree with the FTC. They're not going to do it anymore, and they're paid a two point two million dollar. 
fine. But I got to tell you, I would guess that any device you connect and watch TV on is probably collecting. Why wouldn't they? Is collecting that information. Okay, uh, wait, stop, Leo. Stop, Leo. So many of your devices, like Netflix collects that information. The difference with Vizio is three things. One, they had it. They didn't tell people about it. Yeah, they, and that's one of the things it. they have to do in the consent decree is tell people. You know. Two, they connected data. They collected data not just like on its TV, but like anything watched over that TV. Unlike a service like Netflix or Roku Box, right, which is only collecting data from what it's you're doing service. there. Yeah, but Roku then, watches three, across a bunch of services, right? It puts your data with your IP address, which is the worst. Yes. Yes, so. <laughs> I agree with you. The data should always be anonymized. And I'm sure the TiVo data that we got didn't specify. Oh, Stacy watched and rewound this episode over and over again. Stacy watches Buffy whenever she's <laughs> sad. <laughs> <laughs> and who doesn't after all? Hey, thank Stacey's you, everybody. Hard. It's been a great show. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for watching. We do this week in Google every Wednesday, 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern, 21.30 UTC on twit.tv slash live or live.twit.tv or youtube.com slash twit. We're on YouTube live now. You can get after the fact on demand audio and video from our website, twit.tv slash twig or wherever you subscribe to podcasts. Please do subscribe. We want to see you every week right here on This Week in Google. Bye-bye. <laughs>